Hello, and welcome to Kitchen Party. Let me just unmute people, and we will see who is here today. Unmute. No, unmute. All right, I think that person has <laughs> muted themselves deliberately. All right, all right. This is just, it's going to be, it's going to be that kind of day. I was making jokes about, hello, we are here. I was making jokes about Mercury retrograde, even though I'm not quite sure what that is, but that's the kind of day <laughs> it seems like it's going to be. But anyway, here we are. Here we all are so far. I mean, well, <laughs> most of us <laughs> so far. Um, yes. Welcome to Kitchen Party. Yes, we are all here. <laughs> uh, if you have not, if you have not, uh, if this is your first time tuning into a Kitchen Party episode, the way this works is uh, Jared, who is located above me and also in Seattle, Washington, 2,000, 2000 miles away from me, uh, is going to uh, cook something um, ambitious and complex and interesting to watch. And it's going to take a really long time. So while that happens, I and my friends here are going to hang out in his kitchen virtually uh, through the magic of StreamYard and Twitch and uh 21st century technologies and uh, watch him cook and hang out and talk as people do when you go over to house, someone's house and they're cooking. Um, just like real life, except we cannot smell or eat what he is cooking, which is always the tragic part by the end of the episode. Anyway, so uh, I will go around and um, uh, the, 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 the people who are here can introduce themselves and then we will ask Jared what he is going to be preparing today uh, while we watch in in uh admiration and and jealousy from the city of toronto <laughs> or okay, judgment sue. and amusement or judgment and depending. amusement depending, depending on how well it goes okay sue hello hi, <laughs> hi me uh well i am uh an uh sometime and occasional journalist newspaper editor ex-newspaper editor um, I do not know anything about cooking or baking. It's wonder <laughs> I've survived this long in life. But thankfully, there are heat and serves. I'm kind of known as the heat and serve queen. So I'm quite happy and excited to watch Jared make this incredibly ambitious project. And uh, I should have I should have put something in the oven to bake so I could have had a, the scent to go with it. And I have myriad interests, and now I've got lots of time to explore them. Um, and that's me. Yay. Part of Toronto. <laughs> um, Lizanne, hello. Hello. Uh, so I am also a newspaper person, um, but that's not really ever how I wanted to define myself in life. It just happened that way. And um, like Sue, myriad interests, uh, and I go very focused and deep on very specific things. So, you know, I have a lot of areas that I know nothing about. If you wanted to talk to me about like what was happening in provincial politics, complete blank. But if you wanted to talk to me about Mandrake Root, you know, I can go all day. So I'm going to ask you about Mandrake yes. Root. <laughs> also, yes. you, the reason you were, you were hurrying back in is that you had to, you had dog dog duties um yeah i've got two dogs in the house and they're not used to me being preoccupied at this time so uh they're this is like the lead up this is a two-hour lead up to their dinner so they begin oh, you said, you to should, agitate for it should you have said the d word out loud <laughs> oh uh, yeah good point they seem i don't think they're that smart yet but <laughs> I've seen the what is it? Uh, like I, the, the last time I was over at your place, they were they were they were kind of hanging out in the hall, and you said something like, "Oh, fine, I'll feed you." And they both like leaped up and went. <laughs> and it was like, well, I guess they know what that means. <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> yeah, I think they really get tone. Not so much the words, oh, but tone okay. is everything. Um, anyway, I'm to perpetually distracted because they're tearing stuff up in the living room so i may have to go intervene at certain points yeah, anyway yeah, i really just okay. want to hear about the cake uh okay. personally mm -hmm. okay and we do have people watching us. Uh, it's, that's Rebecca <laughs> cheering you along, Jared. So yeah. <laughs> I need it. I need it. 
So what are you, I'm going to like put you in the little feature, feature seat there yeah. and you can explain what are we, what are we going to watch you attempt to make? <laughs> um, I am going to make a princess torta, which is a princess cake. It is Swedish. It is um, two layers of cake, um, sandwiching custard and raspberry jam. And then there's a dome of whipped cream. With cream and custard together? I can't remember now. I'll look mm. at the recipe. <laughs> um, and then covered with marzipan and with a little fondant rose and a little like decoration of chocolate and stuff. Um, I have never eaten one because I am allergic to almonds. So I can't eat <laughs> marzipan unless I make it myself. So I will be making a pistachio marzipan. Oh my God, that sounds so um, good. Really? Right? <laughs> I hope it will be. I have no idea. Just, I mean, part of the point is always unknown territory, and making marzipan is definitely. I've, you know, I've made, I've made custard, I've made cake, I've whipped cream before. I've never made marzipan, mm -hmm. so we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. The idea, the idea of marzipan made out of pistachio. I mean, I, I, I have a picture, and the, the the marzipan is already green, so it's like this is yeah. Like, well, like color so <laughs> I was not thinking clearly yesterday when I was preparing for all of this. So I got pistachios and I ground them up and then was like, this isn't very green. What did I do wrong? And realized I should have taken the skins off of the pistachios. <laughs> well, so this is a... going to be sort of a, maybe a sort of a camouflage looking. Yeah. <laughs> prince this is going to be like tacky. Princess yeah. Elizabeth in World War II, like fixing <laughs> it. Kind of mm. Yeah, happy mistake. I like it. Yeah, <laughs> it's a wartime. It sounds princess. more tasteful, really. <laughs> That's um, right. And Jared, <laughs> about the shirt, can we get into yeah. that? That's... <laughs> this is get a good into question. What? Your shirt, Jared. You are once oh, again, yeah. I'm, I'm, as, as I'm, is your wand, oh. making a fashion statement. <laughs> yeah. Well, tomorrow's the first day of spring. Um, so I'm wearing yeah. this embroidered oh. gauze baseball jersey. <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, it's so good. Yeah, big. it will be more visible as I get up and do things. But Yes, it's very it's good it for the white um, t-shirt. I like it, yeah. Is it a thrift store find? What is it? Sort of. Um, sometimes when like fashion brands or houses or whatever do photo shoots, um, they'll sell the clothes that they use in those secondhand because they're technically used. Um, so you can pick those up from them pretty cheaply. So it's kind of a thrift store find, but it's also not really. <laughs> yeah, like ex-wardrobe. How, how did you yeah. find out about the uh, this I don't know, post-fashion show sale? Um, I've been aware of them for a long time, but normally they're really, really expensive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I haven't gotten anything from them, but this was a smaller brand, so they're not charging as much for cast-offs. So this was like, I don't know, 50 bucks or something when normally it would what? be 200. $50 <laughs> and it's all got hand embroidery on it. I don't know if it. Oh, I guess it, yeah, they are handboarded because they're all unique. That was a big thing that mm, they said about them. Anyway, that's very nice. Um, I should get started cooking. Jess also okay. is, is I, encouraging you. I will you. actually see that embroidery on the cake. <laughs> <laughs> but no I'll pressure. do the, the chocolate decoration. Will be that's right. Uh, <laughs> Jess, um, Jess has faith in you. I was just gonna. I have. Yeah, uh, we'll um, uh, if I can, I'm having the worst time with this. So. Um, I did upload a picture of, so this is what the cake is supposed to look like. <laughs> oh, so nice. No expectations, though, no, Jared. No pressure. You, no pressure. you know, we you're going to put your own spin on it. See. So also the fun thing about this image is I found it on, it turns out uh, the government of Sweden has an image bank. And uh, the images on it are free to use if you use them to, quote, present Sweden abroad, unquote. So I guess we have to like say nice things about Sweden now in order to well, like- They don't specify that. positively. You could say whatever you want. Exactly, it just says present. It says present. It doesn't, say, it doesn't even say promote Sweden abroad. It just says present yeah. Sweden abroad. So, so, you know. So actually, I mean, like uh, further to that, what is the what is your connection to Sweden and, and therefore to this cake? <laughs> My grandmother is Swedish. Mm -hmm. oh. Um, but in that kind of like American immigrant way where maybe yeah. you have some foods that you eat at Christmas or whatever, but the rest of it is not really a thing. Um, so is this so, cake when you ate at Christmas? 
No, no, I've never had it. Oh, um, so because of the I've been aware of it for a long time, but the first time I ever tried, I wanted to try making it was when it showed up as a technical challenge on the Great British Bake Off. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, on on the Great British Bake Off episode, how did it go? Like, what went wrong? <laughs> um, yeah, well, that's it was really instructive watching that. Um, yeah. I bet. <laughs> Oh, and then they do it. They did it on the the master class that Mary Barry and Paul Hollywood used to do. So I, I've seen it done badly and properly. Uh, whether that actually affects anything here is another matter entirely. So, by the way, we have actually your your interestingly your your food cam is kind of is tilted today, Jared. I don't know who. Yeah, it's that's how it was last time I used it too. It's just going to be like that unless I can get okay. some kind of thing to suspend it from the ceiling. <laughs> Right. Okay. But I can see, so I can see like half a dozen eggs. And what are you, what are you doing right now? Well, um, I am starting the, the custard. Vanilla bean. So I it? am. Yeah. So I've scraped out the, all the seeds. Um, Very nice. And the, it makes a mess. Um, <laughs> whatever. Um, I love vanilla. So this is going to get <laughs> heated up. And while that heats up, I'm going to start whisking eggs and um, sugar and cornstarch together. Those will go in there, get all cooked, and then then butter gets added. I don't, this is not a very healthy cake. Um, <laughs> I'm expecting so much butter. Question. <laughs> yes. Jared, is it Madagascar vanilla? Um, it is bourbon vanilla. Okay. Madagascar vanilla beans are so expensive, they'd be about the same price as your shirt. <laughs> yeah. I, I have gotten Madagascar vanilla before, um, which was great, but also, yeah, not, <laughs> I'm not getting it for baking. <laughs> I think they have to hand pollinate the uh, yeah or something. Yeah, you got to go wow. like pollinate each orchid individually, and then like vanilla is such a process. It's amazing yeah, yeah. that it's as cheap as it is. Well, not amazing, you mm -hmm. know, slave labor, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> There are reasons why it's as cheap as it is. Yeah, there are what reasons you... why things are cheap. Lisa, did, you, did you do a French Republic or whatever your thing is called on vanilla? No, and I'm I'm kind that, of interested in why <laughs> they didn't have that. I uh, I did find out a lot about spice, in, in not vanilla, but uh, nutmeg and what was the other? There was one really big other one. I don't know if cardamom? it was hmm? cardamom. Cardamom. I think it was cardamom. Ooh. Anyway, what about black pepper? Uh, you know what? I don't remember anything about black pepper, although that's huh. definitely another spice that, anyway, the point is that I, when I was reading about <laughs> nutmeg, it was that there was so, so much death just over nutmeg. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like genocide, literally <gasps> genocide happened on this, uh, island that the Dutch, uh, wanted, they wanted the, um, they wanted the nutmeg. But they didn't know how to cultivate it themselves. So they basically killed almost everybody. And then the ones who they kept alive, they enslaved to uh, produce and harvest the nutmeg. Okay, so we're 16 minutes in and we've got to death already. It doesn't. That's <laughs> no, pretty I... good for this stream. It's a grim, it's a grim world. It's a grim world, guys. The roots, the roots of pumpkin spice are soaked in blood. I, soaked I, I in blood. Really <laughs> uh... Okay. So while we're, I'm going to, Lisa, I'm going to like just pop you into the hot seat here. No, I'm not. I'm going to do this. Yes. There we go. Pop you into the hot seat and explain about the, the French Republican calendar. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. So um, I don't know. It, it, are, there, are there people here besides us four? Yeah, yeah. No, we're, yeah, we're streaming now. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So, so, yes. So, I'd be very happy to talk about the French Republican <laughs> calendar. <laughs> my favorite. Uh, so, this was something that happened as a result of the revolution in France in 1790, whatever it was. I just, I think it was, I actually don't remember, 90, 1792. The exact date really doesn't matter. The point is that you probably know the broad outlines that, you know, um, the clergy and the monarchy were villainized and were taxing everybody else just completely to the point where people couldn't afford to eat and they were starving and their children were dying. And so there was a revolution. And then after the revolution, so many things were up for consideration that they were trying to secularize the whole culture. They were trying to um, just keep away any influences of uh, talk about gods or kings or anything like that. 
So somehow in all this, they examined the calendar and they realized like, oh no, all these months are actually named after uh, like, like um, Roman gods or, you know, January's Janus and uh, uh, August is named after Caesar Augustus. And so they, they, they thought, well, we can't have that. And then they thought, well, as long as we're, you know, overhauling that, let's just overhaul everything else. So they also decided to make it metric because that was the other big push at that time. So they, so in order to metricize the calendar, they decided that each month would be three 10 day weeks. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> and uh, which I like one, 10 three day weeks. Yeah. <laughs> three 10 day yeah three 10 day weeks but what the funny thing about it is how they 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 ostensibly did this for the workers but it's like now the workers only have one <laughs> weekend every 10 days it's such a bummer and then uh and then so then so that meant that they had i guess three uh wait how does that work they had a 360 day uh even like calendar but yeah. that would mean they had five days left over yeah. at the end of the year which were in no months they just decided to have a free floating it was a free for all it was a five for all five is for it all. so is it a free floating like half week or it were like were they like for free play days kind of scattered throughout the, the calendar no they were all at once uh, okay. clump, a clump of five days at the end of what was their year so Everything, oh. everything you know about the calendar is thrown out. So the, the, the year did not begin on January 1st, or it didn't even begin on what was January, would have been January 1st. It began on what we would think of as the 22nd of September. Um, mm -hmm. And that was because what they wanted to do was honor the harvest. So that was the most important thing. So they, the first, oh yeah. And then the final detail of this insanity is, so they renamed all the months according to the, the prevailing climate at the end. So you have like mm -hmm. windy months and cloudy months yeah. and frost months <laughs> and blah, 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 which I actually love and I think it's fantastic. There's flaws of course, when you live in a globalized <laughs> yeah, world. It's a little hard to globalize this system. Or even Australians are just really confused. Across and Canada, also climate would change. change. Those months would migrate. And climate change. Yeah, <laughs> August would just become like the melting month. But anyway, the melting pot. The melting pot. So, but the my my favorite thing about it is that uh, they decided that in lieu of saints' days, because in the Catholic calendar every single day was dedicated to a different saint, of course mm. that that wouldn't fly. So they decided to dedicate each day to a different animal plant or or agricultural objects so thing. yes <laughs> a thing. so and those the tools the agricultural tools are something that are observed on the weekend like once every 10 days again oh, really? oh, so this the thing about the farmers it's like oh guess what it's your weekend but you have to observe zero today <laughs> you have to observe it's the, rope the day. <laughs> So yeah, so I dedicated uh, a year of my life uh, every single day to chronicling this on Instagram. And um, so, what is today, you guys? Do you remember? I guess I didn't. Uh, I guess I didn't do it today. I did. I completed a full year already, and then I just started recycling them um, a couple of weeks ago, I think. Anyway, I yesterday was me, but sometimes it feels as if there are two a day. Mm -hmm. uh <laughs> no i don't some no i generally probably me do just them. missing them yeah i think you probably just missing them how dare you sue uh anyway it's, exci it's exciting to get two at once two for oh, the price of one <laughs> like an advent calendar but you get to do two at once. i'm looking at yeah? it now it looks like we're on chickweed day <laughs> oh it, it's no today day. is not chickweed day chickweed day happens. <laughs> okay I actually had an app. I think I took it off my phone. That oh no, it's still on there. That would tell me what it what it's uh, oh it's ash tree day. Of course, it's ash tree. Oh, okay. love the ash tree. Do you? Yeah, whatever's left you of like them. Ash tree. Tell me. 
Oh, I don't know. I can't talk about that much about them. I just love that they come around in a lot of different colors. But of course, you know, they've got black, green, white, whatever. But unfortunately, they've got, you know, uh, bugs that eat them. Yep. Unfortunately. Emerald ash borers. That's the one. One thing I just There's no emerald ash borer day. <laughs> I, <laughs> actually, I could do one, which would just be the bug of the day. I would love oh. that. Ha. <laughs> there's really no good. shortage of bugs i could go for many there's, many years there is no shortage of bugs sue i did not know you were you were an an, an entomology enthusiast yeah <laughs> enthusiast but not an expert so for instance <laughs> here are my crypto cards what's okay, that hang on so i both love playing cards and bugs huh cryptic cards. and this is these are designed by this woman called emmy smith who i follow on twitter and they're beautiful Oh, wow. Huh. They're all moths. Oh, my God. Those are so nice. I know. Are they what? Fantastic? Moths? They're Man. moths. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Most people don't like moths, but they're pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to expand on why they're pretty cool, Sue? Oh, just because they're they're beautiful and they're just like a nighttime um, They're like a nighttime butterfly. I don't know what else to <laughs> tell you about that. <laughs> Uh, most people say, and they keep bats alive. They're good food for bats. Oh. Most people think it's mosquitoes that bats eat, mm. but they, that's a bit of a myth. Hmm. Um, a bat really loves a uh, moth because they're fat. It's more like yeah. a dinner than having, you know, <laughs> <laughs> They're a bit, I mean, moths are a bit, they're, they're, they're beautiful and they're, they kind of have this unsettling quality that makes them interesting, right? There's yeah. a, like, it's, it's, they're kind of mysterious. And I do, I remember when I was little, like looking at moths and just finding them very freaky because they have that very, they have a very plump midsection that doesn't they seem to really have any do. kind of like exoskeleton it's just they're just like they're just really plump they, you, you yeah. feeling they're all like they're just kind of mushy inside the plumpness Ew, it's, gross. it's kind of like yeah. it's kind of disturbing yeah. <laughs> but and then they have these beautiful wings powdery <laughs> but the wings are powdery and then yeah. they seem to blunder when they fly like they don't seem very focused on where they're going mm -hmm. and so there's always a a risk that they'll fly into your hair or your face mm -hmm. or something. I'm scared of them. You're scared <laughs> of them. I am. You don't have a light on your face. Do you wear a, a GoPro or something? Maybe that's a <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, take the take the, the, the mining helmet off, please, Anne, and then you'll <laughs> you I read stay this, away from your hair. You guys know that this children's author called John Belairs? No. No? Oh, yeah. He does. <laughs> Jared will. <laughs> yeah. I'm not super familiar with him, but I'm aware of him. Okay. He wrote this uh, great book for, I guess it was considered young adult fiction, probably like nine-year-olds, maybe? Uh, the House with the Clock in Its Walls. And yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I've heard that. I've heard of I, that. I can't remember if I read it or not, but I do remember that book. Yeah. I just loved it. And in the book, there's a scene with a, a terrible scene where a blundery spooky moth flies into someone's hair so maybe this is a. Uh, i'm telling you it's all bad stuff we've got a <laughs> we've got a panda <laughs> wolves are great they're friendly and warm and all those coyotes every single picture shows them as these terrible things that are going like they're just little whippets with tiny big hair and long ears like bats dracula they're wonderful <laughs> they're not interested in you <laughs> they just they need to moths need to hire navigator that's what they need i'm to telling do. you every time somebody <laughs> says oh what's this and somebody says it's a bug bite and I'm like, it's not a bug bite. The spiders are not interested oh. in you. <laughs> I think that's great that you're a defender of these creatures. I've had some yes. experiences in Toronto during the pandemic with coyotes. Um, mm. Not that I've been personally injured or my dogs have been personally injured. But uh, in the ravine, I did talk to several people whose dogs were bitten by coyotes. I'm not mm. saying that coyotes are bad. They're not. It's just that the coyotes have made especially when it was like the no traffic time of the pandemic. I think the coyotes were just like fucking A and they were just like crisscrossing the city <laughs> and hanging out. It's our know, time. Yes, it's our time. And, and then, is the, healing. then the dogs were there and the coyotes got confused and were just like, right. you, can't, you can't come into my house. Actually, I was <laughs> followed by, I was followed by a coyote one morning. Uh, generally they say that that coyote is escorting you off its territory. Oh, I huh. like that. That's how it felt. 
Yeah. <laughs> make sure you're going. But be you, sure you, you might have door. family around <laughs> in the den. Um, so, yes, they will go because they can't distinguish between, say, a skunk, a raccoon. Well, you think a skunk because it's got a scent, but a dog <laughs> is live meat. And so, yes, if there's a chance. And they've been acclimatized in the city. Mm -hmm. That's an mm -hmm. issue. Don't feed them. No. Yeah, yeah. But it's like a cult now. I talked to a bunch of a coyote experts and they all end with the coyote is great. It's a new, <laughs> a new religion. Yeah. And when we do our next calendar, it'll be the religion of the city, the urban animal. Right. It's very divisive. Coyote day. It's coyote day. <laughs> I'm gonna try and get my little coyote on the screen if I can here. Oh no, he slipped away. He slipped away. Oh, it's okay. Rosie. It's Rosie. <laughs> yeah, he's a slippery guy. Okay. Um but anyway, yeah, the the coyotes were really interesting to watch just in terms of their their body language, their facial expression. They're just like a dog without any joy. Like, you know how dogs have that spark of joy and coyotes are totally grave. They're just, they're not cruel, but they're just like, I'm not here for fun. <laughs> <laughs> not here to make friends. I bet no one's ever bought them a cookie that said uh, happy bark day, for instance, <laughs> with pistachio icing on it. Uh, Sue, have you bought the happy bark day cookies? Yeah, I went and got one today. You did? <laughs> yeah. Whose bark day is it? It, it? I miss them all, but I uh, just was in a mood because I love my dogs and the elder one is getting on. So I thought oh. I'm going to spoil him. Does he he, doesn't, like he doesn't know if it's his bark day. <laughs> no. Oh. Um, unfortunately, I've got Twitter on uh, with some notifications, and I've got a bunch of Ukrainian ones. Oh, mm. God. Yeah. I can only see the first five words. It's okay so long as the word horrible is not there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was uh. going to... Yes. I was going to bring it on back to the French Republican calendar. Let's go there. Let's go there. Okay. <laughs> so, what is your what is your so currently we were we're on the ash tree. Yes. What is absolutely. the do you have do you have a favorite or do you have some favorites that have You know, I would say that I had the most the most difficult month was I think what we think of as January or February, which mm -hmm. in their calendar I think is the snowy month. Is it uh, What? Is it Brumiere? No, it's, uh, I think it's Nivos, but I, I'm not Nivos. totally sure. But anyway. They have the best names. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> the person who came up with the calendar said, well, we have this one month where everything is sleeping in the ground. Obviously, he's in France. If it was here, it would be like yeah, exactly. four months. Where <laughs> um, it never ends. <laughs> it never ends. But uh, so what they did is they said, well, we're going to make this one um, minerals. So it's like, I, when I saw this month, I was like already kind of depressed. And I was like, you're telling me I have to research sulfur and, <laughs> and peat and it just went on and on and on. And I thought it was going to be so fucking boring. And it wasn't, I mean, there were points where I was like, this is super <laughs> bombing me out because so much of it is like tied into you know, climate change and environmental abuses and stuff. But the sulfur one was so interesting hmm. because I was like looking at sulfur as it like, you know, uh, was used in art or, you know, I mean, and the, the, the way it was com combined with brimstone to like have symbol Ooh. hellish symbolic things. And then I discovered this whole thing about how there was a whole genre of, of, of art exhibit where you would in the Victorian era where you would go and you would look at them the paintings and they would have a sound and light show around you while you were looking at the painting so you'd have you'd be in a dark room and they would light this one painting and they would like try to make it look like you were watching a volcano so they'd have rumbling oh my God. like have was this was this like at the time of the French Republican calendar no well, this was in the Victorian times that they okay were still this. still the, the yeah, yeah the full like uh sight and smell of vision of yes sight and, smell <laughs> and then if you look what I love about it is if you look at some of these old paintings that they did then of like you know volcanic explosions or you know brimstone and blah 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 they really presage the disaster movie poster like hmm. 
those ones where it's like a terrible catastrophic event happens and humanity is wiped out like the aesthetic lineage you can really see it uh, fire yeah so it so that part was super cool just in terms of what i learned and how much i thought it was gonna suck and then it didn't but <laughs> Uh, I also loved doing fruits. Like I love doing pear. Like I found out that like one of the pear uh, types of pears, uh, like we had as humans on Earth, we like caused it to become a non-existent, and it was supposed to be the most divine, the ultimate fruit, and we can never have it back again. So oh, that's all very interesting too. <laughs> There was one, what, not, not, there was quinces, and then there was, what are the things that are like plums, and they're not plums? There are these, uh, there's, a, there's a few fruits that are sort of, The ones oh, that have the blet? I think it starts with a D. Uh, damsons? Damson, no. Is it damsons? No. Because damsons well, are just you're in Ontario. Yeah. There's, I can't remember now. There's one. There's one fruit that I always, I always thought was, well, I always thought it was a kind of plum, and then I realized it was like an, a whole... Med maybe it's meddlers i think it might be meddlers yeah 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 meddlers because i always thought it was a kind of plum and then it turns out it's is it a stone fruit it's something different it's a fruit that so there's this whole subspecies of fruits that have to blet which is yes the verb yes. that is when you <laughs> let something get almost rotten and you eat it so let 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 so the <laughs> fruit that we eat that Blets. We're not big fans on the bledding here. <laughs> like in hmm. North America, this is not a bloody culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bananas, maybe. Yeah. So for some people. Oh, if you <laughs> bledded a banana? Not a bledded banana. Oh my God, that's horrifying. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, you could bake with it. They get very fragrant. They get very like, yes. I don't know. They get really gross is what they get. <laughs> oh, you hate bananas. <laughs> I, I, I hate, hate bananas. bananas. So. I hate bananas. <laughs> The right for the worst. <laughs> anyway, uh, so the palm, uh, no, 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 no. Persimmons are the ones that here, there's two types of, I hope this is, I'm really in the weeds with fruit, but there's two types of persimmons. There's Hachia and Fuyu. And Ooh. one of them is one that blets and the other one is not. And so, blet, and so the one that blets, you may see that they look like, they're, be they're the most beautiful color. They're, they're kind of the size of a big apple and they have these shiny like coral orange skins and they have to get super soft, like so mm -hmm. soft that you don't even want to touch, like they they look gross. And then, and then they're, they have a custardy kind of uh, texture, the, the insides of them, mm. but it's really not like, to me, it sort of defies what I think of as fruit, which is like crispy and acidic and. It's not that. It's like prunes, like prunes. Yeah. yeah. Right? Kind of dank and creamy almost in your mouth. <laughs> I'm curious about um, how much the real flavor has been lost because of um, mm. inbreeding. Yeah, me too. Because everything has, is hyper sugarized, for it's instance. Is it? What yeah, and what would, bread, the, bread would the original bread. apple from Kazakhstan have tasted like? Oh, yeah. Oh. Probably not very nice. You probably had to bled it. Yeah, yeah. I had a. I have tried eating a persimmon once when I was in my teens, and I never tried again. And I think it. I think maybe the one that I had was not fully ripe because I like. I took a taste of it, and it was. You know when something is so astringent that yeah. like it just your your entire mouth goes. And you're just like for the next like hour you're just like. Nip, <laughs> you just like yeah, that's the kind around. you want to let sit around. Yeah, <laughs> the astringent that's exactly persimmon. It. When you don't let a persimmon blet, it will withdraw every drop of moisture out of your mouth and make it feel like your mouth is lined with felt. It is just yes. the most horrific feeling. Yes, it was not. It was not a pleasant experience. No. <laughs> um, but if you see the persimmons that are kind of flatter, like like a hamburger, <laughs> those are the ones that you don't have to let them blet. Huh. Where did they yeah, I mean, if you find a hachia persimmon, you can just eat it. It should be fine. But oh. not what does it look like? What does it look like? You know, I what? mean, they'll be labeled. They're uh, labeled in the grocery store. It'll say. Let me see. What? What? Hang on. I'm gonna draw you a picture of what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Your visual.
visual aids. Yeah. This is such if an you're watching this, Yeah, if you're watching this at home and you have questions about persimmons or the French Republican calendar or dogs or what have you, please feel free to feel free to ask them in the comments. <laughs> we we are here to we are here or questions to like, about making custard or questions or about whatever. making custard and you know a, a how's the custard going Jared yeah I'm how curious. is it it's thickening I think it's about there now so, so is it a, a custard or is it a custard and whipped cream mix that's in the the domed bit um I need to recheck the recipe because I'm not clear on that point <laughs> um definitely there's like a layer of custard and jam like custard on its own, and then I think the dome is whipped cream and custard, but... Yeah, oh man. <laughs> I know, all my see. favorite things. Like, that, that thick whipped cream, pastry cream, is, I could just, like, dive into a bowl of that. That was my favorite thing. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay, hold, hold well, on. Well, pastry cream doesn't actually have, it's not the whipped stuff, pastry cream is a custard. This right. is actually, this is pastry cream right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Coral orange color. This is a very, this is an instructive infographic on, on what a... <laughs> What a persimmon should look like. <laughs> that's what a, that's what a, I think Jared said a hashia is the type that you don't have to let, let. Like you can uh, actually eat. <laughs> yeah. And then this oh, kind good. that looks like this. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We got, we got more visual aids. Hang on. This oh, one, oh. you can't eat that one fresh or you'll yes. not. I, mean, it's I so think that's what, yes. I think that's what happened to me. That's, <laughs> that's it officer. That's the persimmon. <laughs> <laughs> want to spit it out <laughs> it's such a unique uh like take like a tactile experience in the mouth yeah it? yeah it is weird yeah mm -hmm. and what about this new trend to kooka melons do what <laughs> oh Rebecca it's like says, a cucumber the, melon thing right what is the name of the calendar it is it is the french republican calendar, right yeah, but it's the so if you Google French Republican calendar, you will there are lots of things about it. You can read up on it. It is a really strange. <laughs> it's that's, that's artifact. also the name of the of the Instagram account. Should anyone yes. want to find it, it's simply called French Republican calendar. Kuka mm -hmm. melon. It's it, trending. It looks like a pickle. <laughs> Everybody went out and bought seeds for it. They would, seeds were actually, can, I'm sorry, I've, I've got light here. You can't see very oh, well. Oh, it's it's, yeah. about, it's yeah. about this big. I don't gonna, know. Gonna, okay. No, no, I'm gone. <laughs> don't put the camera on. Never. <laughs> I'm just Googling it. Hang on. Miniature <laughs> watermelon. Yeah. So the next thing that's going to First take probably over. Gallagher in the chat. <laughs> uh, so can you talk to me about these tiny melons? No, I just know. Oh, the tiny melons. That's sorry. When you said cook melon, I didn't put it together. And I was yeah. like, oh, those, the yeah, great you know, size melons. You know about them, Nadia? Yeah, I've seen them. I have not yet. I, wa I want to try one. I have not yet tried one. Oh, oh, that's, oh, better. Oh, that's a better oh, picture. It's and, like they're so uh, tiny that you can put them in a, in a thing like pickles. Yeah, yeah. They look like green grapes, basically. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! What's inside of them? Has anyone yes. ever had one? No, no. I just... Boring inside. They just look boring inside. Okay, what would be exciting inside? <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what would be exciting <laughs> inside. Inside. <laughs> inside to me. It was red on the inside, like a watermelon. <sighs> That's what I what about know. a durian? What about a durian on the inside? <laughs> Oh, stinky, tiny, tiny. I still never stink actually bump. had a durian. I feel like I should at some point. I know. <laughs> uh, I. That have... would be daring day. No, I haven't either. Yeah. <laughs> Next kitchen party. <laughs> Get yeah. a durian. Oh, yeah. Open it up. <laughs> Do something with it. <laughs> uh, Jared, can I ask what stage are you at now? What are you making right there? Mm -hmm. um, this is the custard. I am. The butter has been put into it and is getting incorporated. Mm. slower than I thought it would be. I didn't know that um, there was butter in it. Yeah, I mean, for this one you do, you don't necessarily always do it. This is the first, I think this is the first time I've ever put butter in it. Um, but I'm using Murray Berry's recipe, and I think I trust her, so. Yeah. <laughs> you watch the show also? Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
So question, uh, how much or if anything, did you prepare in advance for this? So I separated eggs for the custard. Mm -hmm. I ground pistachios. I measured everything out. Mm -hmm. Almost everything. Um, yeah, that's that's all I did was measuring. Mm -hmm. and, um, this is about to go in the fridge to chill, and then I will start mm -hmm. the cake. Uh -huh. I'm the imagining the, the cake probably doesn't have to bake for very long. Um, <laughs> good question. <laughs> Uh, 25 to 30 minutes. So. Okay. <laughs> so does everybody have um, an international grandparent? Right. I mean, deceased, but yes. <laughs> no, I mean, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is really good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty envious. I love custard. Mm. I, I do too. Oh, yeah. I actually Before hate it until I start making it myself. Bongolini donuts, anything with custard inside. <laughs> It's a very undersung like dessert, you know? Mm. It just it looks boring, but it's very tasty, yeah. <laughs> Especially if you get good vanilla. They're not to be all mm -hmm. Ina Garten about this. But... <laughs> <laughs> International That's grandparents, Sue. Yeah. How about how about you? <laughs> yeah, so I do. Um, thank you for picking up on that. <laughs> 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 yeah, so um my father was adopted. So the Grimbley is a nice English whitewash. Hmm. And his mother's name, a woman I never met, we have one picture of her. Her name was Maria Rudinoff. Oh. So sorry, where, where did the Grimbley come from? <laughs> My father was adopted mm -hmm. by, was uh, by an uh, English family, an English transposed to Canada family. And they're, they're, they were named Grimbley. They were totally Grimbleys. Okay. They were very <laughs> Grimbleys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so there's no English blood in any of us. Huh. This is so <laughs> weird. So, Sue, your dad was originally Russian or what? Ukrainian or Ukrainian-Polish. So, hmm. Because the borders wandered, but we have so very poor paperwork. Um, he found his family when he was 30. And... Um, his siblings um and that was important to him obviously but um after a while he you know he, he vaguely kept in touch and then didn't um and they were all named zelka <laughs> what do you mean all their first names were zelka yes zelka was a good <laughs> No, uh, and we've often looked into that to see, you know, every once in a while somebody gets uh, a blood test. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right. Yeah. Was this a, was this a wartime thing? Probably yeah. before 1930. So I'm not sure oh, when the okay. famine was. Hmm. Um, but his parents came over, and this woman that whose dad's mom was the second wife. His dad's mom was. The second I know it's a, it's incredibly complicated. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I just because uh, somebody else here was it Jared mentioned his Swedish grandma. Yeah, yeah, and hence the hence the princess cake. Jared, by the way, is there is there a reason it is called princess cake? Was it developed for a Swedish princess, or is it just fancy? Oh man, you know I knew that uh, before you asked. <laughs> Let me just Google that really fast because <laughs> I want to know. I feel like they did make the princess cake once on the Bake Show. Yeah, yeah, they did it as a technical challenge. Yeah, have they, have they ever done it on Nailed It? I don't actually know. Um, so I've just, I've just. Oh, okay. That, Sorry that, to interrupt. It, that, oh. it was originally called Green Cake. Yes. <laughs> but was given the name Princess Torta <laughs> because princess, the princesses were said to be fond of the cake. So. <laughs> oh. The princesses of some, like daughters of some duke or something. It's a, it's a quality rebranding right there. Not to be confused with a Disney princess cake. No, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. When you Google it, you get a lot of you get a lot of uh, frozen yeah. cakes. Yeah, like the Barbies or whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Long swirly dresses. Oh, oh, Jared is on mute now because there's there's blending happening. I'm gonna. Yeah, like, so we're in the presence. Oh, look, look at that blender view. <laughs> Ooh. 
wonderful challenge for fun, which is amazing. <laughs> Did the custard go in the, is this still the custard? It hasn't gone into the fridge yet? No, the custard went into the fridge. Sorry, I know he's muted. So I, I, I the custard went into the fridge and now we are beginning uh, with the cake layer, I believe. Oh, so. <laughs> keep up, Grimley. Sue, so, do you watch the bake show? Yeah, do you guys watch bake shows? Cooking shows? Um, nailed it. And occasionally the British one, because sometimes they've got really great um, people as the hosts. Um, and it's fun to watch people challenge themselves, especially when they have to make something like uh, a castle. Yes. <laughs> I really like the British baking show quite a bit. Um, I think I like it more than the Canadian one. Hmm. Um, I think I like how intolerant the judging is. It's like <laughs> maybe because I went to alternative school. <laughs> she went to seed. She went to seed. <laughs> I've already, yes, I went to seed. I've already heard, you know, you got a purple in math or whatever that joke is. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to see stern judging. <laughs> I, I would you never ever go on. Like that kind of, I cannot withstand that kind of judging personally. I crumble. Like I'm mm. very much a like positive enforcement <laughs> person. <laughs> but I like watching other people be all like crisp and, you know, stiff upper lippy about it. It's kind of like watching the Olympics, people doing things that you can't do. <laughs> Not given any quarter. Yes. Yeah. No. No. I do think that Paul Hollywood is a complete douche, though. I do, I don't like him. Um, there was the I I don't know if you watched this series because I I don't know when they're on. I just watched a few of them with Noel Fielding. Oh yeah. Bar. He's so good on the on the Bake Show. He's so good. He's so good. He knows how to go up and chat people up and yes. make stupid jokes and wear great costumes. Yeah. Mm. He's just very funny. I love him. <laughs> yeah. Is this all still is it still Great British Bake Off? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have thought I think I've seen like one episode. <laughs> so to, oh really? I have to like catch up on the Great British Bake Off. Everyone I know likes that show. So mm -hmm. there's gotta be something to it. <laughs> but I do really like nailed it because I really love Ashley Nicole Black and also it's incredibly funny to see them try to make something like stained glass in five minutes. <laughs> Actual stained glass? No, out of baked goods. Oh yeah. yeah. Forget forget that. Usually a ship and a bird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no we're gonna make a castle out of out of candy canes <laughs> precisely i'm kind of mesmerized by the hang on yeah, by the, the blending look at it it's very there's it. something very wow. about blending yeah <laughs> you know i feel like a hand blender like that is a real tool of the late 50s early 60s and like i don't i don't have one and i feel like no one i know has one huh i have one we have one what do you do with <laughs> this? In the olden days, <laughs> in the olden days, I might try to bake the occasional little thing. Oh, you did, eh? Yeah, I have to say. But usually it was an epic fail, and the kids would come home from school, and they'd say, Mom, it wasn't raw in the middle. And I'd say, just tell them it's pudding in the middle. Pudding in a cup. <laughs> I was ahead of my time. <laughs> Yeah, it was like one of those molten uh, chocolate cakes or whatever. <laughs> That's right. Now it's all air fryers and Instapots. Oh, yeah, Instapot. man. Yes. Right, Jared? <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> or do, you have still a, blending. do you have an air fryer? Or an Instant Pot? Are you asking me? No, Jared. He can just, he can just nod yes or say no. <laughs> air fryer? Do I have an air? Oh, yeah. no. That, that oh. seems pointless to me. I... And disdain for the air fryer as well. <laughs> yeah. I do have an instant pot that I have used maybe three times because it terrifies me. <laughs> I've had it for over maybe about two, uh, two and a, one and a half years, almost two. And I've Why are you scared of it scares your instant me so much. pot. It seems benign. Because, <laughs> because I'm a very anxious person and I worry that it will blow up in my face. <laughs> Even oh. though... There's no reason it would. I'm still just like, oh, God, oh, God. 
because I'm the person who reads the like the warnings in the owner's <laughs> manual and is like, okay, that's definitely going to happen to me. Yes. So risk. Of that's why the, the punch scares. I me. guess you don't take very many medications then. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, that's no. the worst. Reading, reading yeah. for possible, possible side, side effects. effects. <laughs> the worst. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's the world is a terrifyingly dangerous place <laughs> dark and full of terrors yeah. <laughs> so speaking of the french republican calendar and things that oh, are yeah. dark and full of terrors yeah. the mandrake roots <laughs> mandrake roots oh mandrake root <laughs> <laughs> i know that you like the universal <laughs> symbol <laughs> it was awesome <laughs> Wow, you just like you just uncorked a whole other spiel because it's all the doctrine of signatures, which was uh, the way that medicine was conducted for centuries was that if something resembled a body part, it was probably it was God's yes. it was God's plan that He would make something that would cure your earache into a thing that looked like your ear, so that all humans on Earth would know. Oh, that's for earache. <laughs> <laughs> it really doesn't work like that i uh, what i remember is that you were supposed to rub bear fat on your head if you were going bald because bears are hairy <laughs> so, okay that's not quite doctrine of signatures but it's but it another... looks like there is hair on it and so you've rubbed the bear's fat on your head and and, and the hair grows back <laughs> it, yes that's one of my <laughs> Getting hair back on <laughs> your head, but the uh, but the mandrake root was believed to Im impact or cure or whatever the whole body because the, the mandrake root looks exactly like a little human form, a little humanoid in the right. in the ground. <laughs> and, um, and there was these absolutely insane kind of myths around it that. It would sprout up only where the blood of an executed man had fallen and that you could not pull it out of the ground yourself because it would shriek so loudly you would die. And so instead, people would tie, tie dogs to the mandrake root and have them pull it out of the ground. Oh, instead you would think by like the the significant lack of dead dogs as a result of this process I, <laughs> would I, kind of tweak people too <laughs> i just pictured the landscape full of these dogs tied to roots that they're just <laughs> running around people trying to catch them anyways but the thing about the mandrake root is that unlike many other medicines and the doctrine of signatures which would do nothing or yeah. would do something totally different mandrake mm -hmm. root actually does have uh like psycho what's it called impact like it uh <laughs> causes weird effects in your brain oh, Jared's okay. nodding. i think jared knows about this yes okay. one thing yeah, yeah. yourself <laughs> yeah <laughs> un un tell uh, us tell it, us about your mandrake knowledge <laughs> um it's actually it causes i think some psychotropic effects like it yeah. messes with your cognition or whatever but it's also it was used as an anesthetic because it yes. can knock you out really, really easily. Ooh. So it's actually pretty dangerous to use because of how easily it will just kill you. <laughs> but yeah. So not not it, by screaming, but if you eat it. it yeah. <laughs> it's not medicinally useless, but it is medicinally dangerous. dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Um, the signature of doctrines is theologian based or theology based. Yeah. Doctrine of signatures. Wait, I transfer. It's amazing how religion steered everything off base, <laughs> off course. Yeah. Like, look at this. Look at this batter. Oh, is that beautiful? It looks really a nice. Really color. nice. I, um, it's, it is a pure cream color, even though it's the batter. Yeah. I can't. Well, it's, it's got the eggs in it. That's why it's got that kind of yellowish, gorgeous. golden, golden color. So you guys see how there's nostrils formed by the spinner. Nostrils. <laughs> I love it. Oh Did my god. <laughs> <laughs> nostrils yes oh, seeing faces and things yes uh 
Yeah, no, Sue, the, 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 the <laughs> doctrine of St. Matthias was, was religious because it was like, everybody thought it was God's way of easily labeling everything like in the pantry and saying, okay, if you have an earache, go look for a thing that looks like an ear because you know God has planned that, that you'll get it and find it and then it'll, it'll cure your ear. So, oh yeah, the other thing I will say about this is that the word for those things was wart, like W-O-R-T. So right. oh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, blah, blah, wart. Like, you know, wart. That yeah. comes to my head now is nipple wart, but there's other ones. <laughs> <laughs> there's dozens of them. There are many plants with, that have wart as part of their name. Mm -hmm. I have questions about nipple wart. Breastfeeding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So it, probably it does it, like for cracked nipples or something like right. that. Well, that makes sense. But does it look like a boob? <laughs> uh, it must look like nipples, right? Yes. Okay, I'm looking it up. I'm so, I gotta, I gotta do pseudoscience. <laughs> we gotta do we're doing pseudoscience <laughs> and I, I did find some like contemporary times like pinterest pins about like mm -hmm. that were like the exact same thing the doctrine of signatures but like in a modern new age context no it mm. doesn't look anything like a nipple <laughs> i am disappointed <laughs> just a nice yellow daisy like chick weed type okay, of thing okay, I, gotta, I, I, I gotta you'll find one <laughs> I've yes. got to figure this is the modern iteration of it. <laughs> oh, man. Nipple wart. <laughs> there are a couple times where the Doctrine of Signatures didn't lead people entirely astray, though, which is weird. I mean, it's probably just like if you you know throw enough darts, you'll hit the bullseye mm -hmm. eventually. But like so. there's a specific, I think it's snake root or something. Mm -hmm. The flower looks kind of like a, a birth canal. So people were like, oh, well, this must be good for what, you know, female complaints. And it turns mm -hmm. out it's actually like an abortive fashion, like uh -huh. it <laughs> solves some issues that you might have. Wow. <laughs> that are related to that um, part of your body. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Huh. <laughs> and yet it's called snake root, not. I mean, it has yeah. older names that I can't remember right now. <laughs> not uterus wart. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, probably called womb wart or something. Womb wart, like yes. <laughs> womb wart. I just found out that there is a vagina museum. Sorry, this is a segue. Of course there is. <laughs> yeah. I just heard Where? Is it in Iceland? Scandinavia. <laughs> it's in Bethnal Green, north of London. Oh. Hmm. Ah, I found it. Okay. Show the, the picture. But this is ridiculous. This is such a stretch. The flower buds of nipple wart were thought to resemble nipples. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Well, there Gina, you can you... There's a bunch of them. Can you show us? No. I'm going <laughs> to find you an image right now. Okay. My friend. <laughs> the red trillium could have passed. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, really, anything in bud form kind of looks like a nipple, right? <laughs> well, okay, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Persimmons look like giant nipples if you like stand far enough. Wait, everything looks like a nipple. What's Jared <laughs> doing now? Jared. Jared, what are you doing now? I am sifting flour, cornstarch, and baking powder into the cake batter. Mm. And I'm about to do some folding. <laughs> good, good. I'm going to leave this. I'm gonna, we, we, can, we can watch you fold. <laughs> yeah. Watch the cake. I can't fold. fold anything now without thinking of that Shits Creek episode where they try to figure out how to fold. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good one. Doesn't he For just those scream us... the word fold a million times and she just screams it back at him? Yeah, yeah. I love that part. Here we go. Look at this. Ooh. Mm. It's very pleasing mm -hmm. watching someone fake because yes. I find it a deeply stressful, <laughs> well, no, I shouldn't say deeply, moderately stressful activity. Mm. So just watching someone kind of do it calmly and seemingly knowledgeably is quite relaxing. <laughs> Why did you qualify it as seemingly? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I called her out on it. <laughs> You look like you know what you're doing, Jared. Yeah, no, you, totally you, bake, you bake a lot, even if you've never baked a princess cake before. <laughs> yeah, like I've made a similar cake. Yeah. I've made custard. It's beautiful. 
As my <laughs> sister, who is a super baker, would say, look at that beautiful batter. Yeah. <laughs> Jared, Jared has a sister who is a cordon bleu trained baker and uh, yeah. for some reason is not here to making fun of him right now. I don't know. Where, where is Krista? <laughs> um, for all I know, she's watching and just kind of biting her like, ah! <laughs> yeah, yeah chat, chat is quiet today, which I hope doesn't mean like nobody is here, but I've got like, I've got the little eye telling me people are, are watching on the little, the okay. little, the little so notifications. So. Uh, um yeah. I am going to the bathroom, but but um, I'm game to talk about right now as we speak. I'm just letting it all out. But I'm game to talk about the Philip experiment when I come yep. back. Okay, we will we will just leave that as a teaser for game. game. We won't explain it. We will yeah. not explain it until she comes back. <laughs> okay. And you're Jared. You're now sifting something. Is, that, is this like a giant sifter that you have here? What's the no? So um, what I just put in was melted butter. Oh, I see. Yes. Uh, you know, I, one thing I don't think this cake has is enough butter. <laughs> yeah, you know, I I might just spread it with some, you know, <laughs> when I more. when I pull it out of the oven. <laughs> okay, God, this is so. Oh, I can just tell how delicate this is, and it's yeah. stress. This is stressing me out. Oh, okay. Is it so? But it was. Wow, no, it's gorgeous. When you say it's a sponge cake, so did you did you whip the egg whites first? I just I saw a lot of blending going. Oh, on. so it's. Um, the word sponge on the label that I wrote was just like, that's what the recipe calls it is, is the sponge. Cause they're British. Yeah, yeah. So they call everything sponges. Right. Right. Oh, I see. <laughs> um, and I just didn't want to. Or pudding. Well, like, I mean, every, every cake is a sponge. <laughs> is a sponge in... or, and every dessert is a pudding. So it doesn't mean something specific. No, like it just really means airy cake. cake. Mm -hmm. No, just a yeah, just a cake. But how is how is the batter looking compared to other batters you have battered in the past? Um, it's pretty liquid, and I don't know if it's supposed to be. A lot of um, a lot of cake batters are liquid, though. Yeah. So I'm used to the cakes that I make most often are like are closer to um, pound cakes or Victoria mm. sponges, which have a much stiffer batter it's light but it's still pretty stiff there's a lot of butter in there that's why because it's there's a lot yeah a lot of butter to stiffen mm -hmm. it up there's a lot of other things going on that make it kind of the texture of like frosting mm -hmm. whereas this is very very liquid yeah but I, like i said i have seen i have seen like white cake liquid that are like white yeah cake oh i have too i just don't battery. make them that often that's why this yeah. is making me a little <laughs> fair enough nervous. fair enough <laughs> have you tasted the batter Ugh, no. <laughs> Too many eggs? I, I'm i not, yeah, I'm not really a raw egg person, which is hilarious okay. because mm -hmm. in a minute, the marzipan is going to have raw egg whites in it. No. <laughs> uh, put it in for, okay. I, I forget I, what marzipan is. Oh, yeah. I want to I wanna ask you about the marzipan. We're, we will get to the, the Philip experiment in a, in a minute. But um, so how does one make marzipan? And, um, and explain well, what it is for... <laughs> one is about to find out. <laughs> <laughs> um, marzipan is a paste of almonds and sugar mm -hmm. and um, egg. So, there's a lot of variations where you'll end yeah. up putting like corn syrup in or whatever. Mm. Um, again, I am following Mary Berry's recipe, sort of. Um, where are my bowls? <laughs> Where is the one that I wanted to use? I was out here a second ago. This is frustrating. Um, God, where did it go? The stuff you see shaped into little creatures. Yeah, like yeah. marzipan yeah. pigs or whatever. And fruit. A lot of like marzipan a lot of fruit. Yeah. Got it. Mm -hmm. It ends up being like the texture of Play-Doh. Yeah. Almost. Um. And do we like it? Is it appealing? <laughs> yeah, I mean, but Jared... I, we... I love it. Um, okay. I just can't eat it. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, have you ever tried it being allergic to almonds? Is it how you found yeah, out you're so allergic to almonds? Yeah, so before I developed an almond allergy, <laughs> oh, I, I ate see. marzipan not frequently, but often enough to know that I liked it. Mm. Um, but since I developed the allergy, I obviously haven't been eating it. <laughs> 
thick. I don't understand people who enjoy it. I it is it's a very divisive food. It's very <laughs> guess. strong flavor, and mm -hmm. I think it, there's something to me that's like almost sickening about it. Um, so it is I, really sweet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, not just the sweet, but the the flavor even of it. Somehow. Yeah, it's usually it's made with almonds, and it's also usually like bumped up with almond flavoring, so it's like really intensely yes. almondy. Yeah, mm -hmm. and lots of sugar, tons of sugar, lots of sugar. Yeah. I mean, it's candy. It is a, a an almond based candy. Is how I would describe it. So yeah, so the idea of making it, a, it out of uh, pistachios is is really intriguing to me. Is it as a... divisive as um, Turkish delight? I would say much less divisive. No. <laughs> Nobody's making call-out posts for marzipan, but they are for Turkish Delight. I, I actually do like Turkish Delight. Um, so there you go. I, yeah, it's good. People, it's just people, because they read Light and Witch in the Wardrobe, are expecting... Oh, yes, that's it. Right. No, Precisely. Something that is going to be immediately appealing to everybody and the most delicious thing ever when really it's just this one kid likes it. Yeah, I like this one book. kid during like in wartime England when there were no other sweets. <laughs> yeah. So he's going to pick like the sweetest, stickiest thing he yeah, can think exactly. of and you get Turkish delight. And a bunch of Americans were like, oh my God, I have to try this. And then didn't know that they were getting into something that is not calculated for American tastes. And then they made it into the big Turk chocolate bar, which is a whole other kettle. Of That's thing. right. Oh, I don't <laughs> think I've ever had filling. That. It might be a Canadian yeah. thing. It might not be an American thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's yeah. basically like a, a a bar shaped lump of red uh, fruit flavored jelly covered no. with chocolate. No, mm, it's not okay. fruit flavored. It's supposed to be rose water flavored. Yeah. Oh, I haven't had one since I was a kid. But yeah, it is That's very cool. weird. I yeah. bought one. I was just like, I can't believe they're still trying to make this happen. This is one of the. <laughs> How it's mine? an odd, it's an yeah. odd candy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Haribo instead. Okay. <laughs> candy moment. Um, I'd like to also do a little, uh, like just. Um, oh yes, yeah. speaking of Canadian snacks, shout out. <laughs> so I got these magic masala flavored chips. What? Yes. Just at the corner store. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm really impressed because they're quite hot. Like they're hmm. quite spicy and not just not just hot spicy, but they're also like super flavorful spicy. Huh. I feel like they had, like often when they have that are for ethnic palates, they will yeah. like, and subdue them for the Yeah, yeah. They'll but I it down. Like, mm -hmm. It tastes fully Indian to me. I cannot... Yes, Sue? That reminds me of the snack hour we did once a week, or you guys did once a week at the Globe and Mail, this week in snacks. And <laughs> would bring in obscure stuff. What's and new then, in snacks? Yeah, and then Duck Shauna made a whole thing out of it. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then we went to India, and then we ate Indian snacks in India. <laughs> uh, anyway, I, having tasted Indian snacks from India, I would say that these qualify. These are... Huh. Very Indian chips. Um, and then they had another flavor that was chicken and tomato, but I gave that one oh. away first. Because... <laughs> That's not a famous combination. It's like... Chicken and tomato? <laughs> I'm vaguely, maybe on the chicken parm side, but without the Yeah, parm. yeah. Like at least call it like, uh, what is it? Chicken cacciatore or okay, something. Yeah. Gonna... <laughs> Don't just like name it after two it. ingredients. <laughs> I just call it chicken cacciatore flavor, not chicken and tomato <laughs> that's a grocery list i'm sorry it's not a chip flavor <laughs> yeah. i do like the exotic chip flavors there's a couple different uh, uh buffalo wings flavors out now mm. those are good yeah <laughs> anyway okay do we want to do we want to talk about okay so first of all wait a minute oh oh, oh there's something happening there it's doing yeah. something exciting over this. there this is it's the moment kind of, of truth I'm looking at it and it's kind of cumin colored, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a very, yeah. Um, you might so have actually, to put some St. Patrick's dye in there. Oh, I've got, <laughs> I've got food coloring. Um, I just don't know what it's going to look like because it's, uh, we'll see. Um, actually, <laughs> part of the whole new experience here was grinding pistachios, realizing I should skin them first. But also, um, it turns out that if you grind pistachios, 
you're going to lose about half of them because they're not going to be fine enough. Oh. So I am substituting some semolina because that is huh. an ingredient you can use to make entirely nut-free marzipan. Oh. Huh. So we'll see. I, we'll see. Um, <laughs> if nothing else, I know the custard is really good. Do you have to... Um, <laughs> So this is going to be, what? I want to see the food coloring. <laughs> uh, just a second. Oh, something, um, just, something just went in the, yeah, okay. Yeah, I know. Sorry, I, I know. distracted you and you dropped something. <laughs> How dare you? Um, <laughs> so this is pistachio flour or meal or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, some semolina, which, mm. Mm, whatever. Um, and then icing sugar or powdered sugar and um, just ordinary sugar. So I have to mix this and then I have to add some egg white and some almond extract. Um, mm. I have gone for imitation because mm. I don't want to die. <laughs> <laughs> then the food coloring. You don't want to okay. die from dye? <laughs> die um, from um. the dye. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so we will we will keep an eye on that. So I was um, looking up why it's green, but this oh. doesn't really answer the question. <laughs> Apparently, it was originally called grün. Tarta, so green yeah, cake. Yeah, it's green cake. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then it was given the name Princess Tarta because the princesses were like it. But why was it green to begin with? <laughs> it's green, green is a difficult it's color with cake. baking. Yeah, yeah, it's unnatural. You want it know. in your salad. I wonder what era the cake was invented in. Okay, I got a nineteenth century, I think. Mm. So at but that yeah. at that time, they would have had dye to make it green, presumably. I was just listening to a food cat, uh, food cast, a podcast yeah. about food coloring, <laughs> and which ones were which ones were rare and hard to hard to develop, and which ones were, and it, like red and blue. Red was hard to red was made out of something that turned out to be kind of sketchy, and then was so was replaced with a different kind of coloring around like the nineteen seventies. But blue has always been really hard to make. Hmm. Um, but I don't know about green. Like, is there a natural? There might be a natural green that. Oh, there's one of the. There's so many natural greens. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. can just like freaking use spinach juice or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, hmm. <laughs> so that might be a. Like, it might have been like a popular color just because it was a coloring that you could easily right. find and use. Mm -hmm. There was you a. Have... There was a prince cake. Oh. Yellow. <laughs> Oh, interesting. And an opera cake, red or pink. We made he made an opera cake that was an earlier episode and it was wow. like one of the what? most successful one of the most successful cakes that he has made. Yeah. Oh, so, I need to try that again. That was amazing. Yeah. So so far on this stream he has made an opera cake, which worked out super well. And a baked Alaska, which was the one thing that did not the <laughs> one at least visual and aesthetic failure. <laughs> <laughs> that we had so far and this is kind of like halfway between the two so it really could go either way in terms of yeah he's looking very very stuff. focused right now he's extremely think... focused on the mars of him <laughs> there's a lot of lumps of powdered sugar in here lumps you can oh, kind of see. see them on the yeah. there's all these yeah. little speckles yeah 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 um mm. maybe they'll get like massaged out because it's gonna yeah, kind of needed as you keep so. mixing it yeah mm -hmm. are we i'm are not gonna, gonna keep <laughs> Are you going to yeah. knead it with your hand? Oh, cool. Okay. You know, Jared, you could put that into the food processor as it is, couldn't you? Um, you know, <laughs> that would be true for <laughs> somebody else, <laughs> but my food processor is about this big. Oh, okay. ah. so I'd have to do it in batches, and I don't want to yeah. do that. So I'm just going to yeah. work at it. It's fine. I bought a Kijiji Vitamix last year, and. Uh, well, I just have done that as a as a as an experience in life. Get a get and a, you use it. The mix during yes. So in the summers, often I don't really want to eat breakfast, but it's too hot. I don't have air conditioning here, so mm -hmm. but I will eat a slurry of like <laughs> of like oats and milk and bananas and ice and blah 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 in the mornings. I kind I guess it's a smoothie, is what it is. It just reminds me of, of Sean McAuliffe's idea of there being like a food what? slurry tube that we should have. A what? A food yes. slurry tube. <laughs> in, every in every home where you just open it up and a, and a palatable, nutritious slurry comes out. 
Because he was so tired of foodie pretensions. <laughs> also, like food is a lot of work. So if we could just I, I, I have often wished that, you know, like dogs, dogs and cats seem so happy with their kibble. And we need like a human kibble. So you can just like that you can just like have a bowl of kibble. <laughs> um, <laughs> like eat it out of the bag. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, oh, Jared, you gotta, you gotta mute that. Maybe. Oh no, no. No, I'm, I'm done. Okay. Sorry. Sue, so what did you say? I, I said I was making a dumb joke. I said I think that's fiber first. Ah. <laughs> it's being, it's being taken off the market. <laughs> fiber first. Yes. Yeah. Oh wow. Uh, just made a chocolate lava cake in her crock pot. What? Nice. <laughs> oh, genius. Dumb. And it turned out. Oh. I have made, I haven't done it in a while, but you can make a uh, chocolate cake in, you can make cake in the microwave and it actually works. And there's oh. like, there's a few recipes for like mug cake where you, you, you make like a really tiny amount of batter in a mug and then you Aww. put it in the microwave for like one minute and you have a cupcake. So. I've heard that. <laughs> but I've made a, there's a recipe for, yeah, it's like chocolate cake. You know, you know, you have to put put it in a glass bowl because obviously it's going in the microwave, so you can't, <laughs> you can't put it in like a baking tin. But yeah, it's surprisingly like it doesn't have a crust on it. But if you're going to put like a glaze or a frosting on it, it doesn't matter. So huh. that's surprisingly good. It's a fun thing to know in the in the summer if you want cake, but it's too oh. hot to turn the oven on. <laughs> good point. Good to know, Jared. What's going into that now? It's the um, there's egg in there, and I've got to put the um, fake almond extract in. So mm. we shall see how this goes. Okay, Lizanne, mm -hmm. the Philip experiment. Oh, <laughs> I'm just—I want everybody to know I'm just talking about this at Natty's behest. This is. <laughs> yeah. this but is this only came with. I, I only know about it because you told me about it and I've been mildly obsessed with it ever since. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, so this, I found out about the Philip experiment when I went to a weird therapy school. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how you found out about it? That's amazing. <laughs> there was a guy who was a, on faculty at the weird therapy school who, he was so weird. He, when the, when the, um, the college, the Ontario College of Psychotherapists and blah, blah, blah was established, which was only in the last like five years. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They had to go to all the schools that were teaching therapy at that time and find out how credential, you know, how good everybody's credentials were. Anyway, they found out that he had like false credentials, this guy. Anyway, he was the guy who talked about it. His name's Adam Crabtree. And he, um, was talking about how there was a group of parapsychologists that's what is that what those people are yeah, called yeah mm -hmm. parapsychologists in toronto in the 70s and it was like a pretty significant group and they decided to so one of the people in it believed that ghosts were real only in objectively real but only in the sense that they were a co-created phenomenon um that was like a product of on mass belief huh. so you could you could evoke a ghost if you all decided that you wanted to believe in a ghost together so this group got together and they decided to start holding seances to and they made up this whole backstory about this fictional guy called Phil, yeah right that's the thing they, they made him up from scratch and he, they wrote a whole scratch. story about him yeah he was i don't even remember when he was around the 1700s yeah it was like the 1700s and he had this whole like he married a woman who was burned as a witch or something like there was he, a lot of drama yeah, he, there was something about a Romany woman. Yeah, was that's what it was. was a could, yeah was a witch, and then they burned her at the stake. But it was his fault somehow. Yes. I don't remember that detail. And I think he was also like possibly having an affair. I dog don't, cam. Dog cam. <laughs> um, that's Holly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like hearing over your shoulder. <laughs> Anyways, so this group of like six people decided that they were just going to keep holding seances at this table and they were doing it in the in the way that they did it in the like Victorian times with table knocking like yes mm -hmm. would hear like like actual seances. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And the knocks would tell you the ghost was present and stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah, I you know yeah, Philip was killed by a woman. Who was Philip mad. was what? Oh, killed by a woman. Yeah. yeah. Anyhow, doesn't matter. Really doesn't mm -hmm. matter. 
the yeah. point is he was he was the ghost they decided to invoke. Yeah, and yeah. the and they, they knew that he didn't exist because they had made him up from scratch. Yes. Right. <laughs> right. And then um at a certain point, uh these weird phenomena started happening. Like they did start hearing knocks and then it escalated, like the table started shifting yes. and then the table just started moving around like it was trying to get out the door by itself. Like, and the thing about this is that what I really don't, what I really don't understand is that this whole thing was captured on television. What? You can look at it on YouTube. <laughs> called the Philip experiment and it was like a Canadian like it could have been city TV or something like that and they just <laughs> asked them to reproduce the seance mm -hmm. this group did and the table is going everywhere it's going upside down it's turning all around and there are no I mean I don't know what to make of it because yeah, yeah. if it is a hoax somehow like I don't think that the staff of the TV station was knew it was a hoax like I don't know how you make a table do these things without strings on it like the whole thing is very mysterious mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very so do, do you believe in it then do you think it was a thing I feel so agnostic about it mm -hmm. I am willing to be open to lots of possibilities I really can't understand how it worked mm. I mean I'm really divided. Like part of my mind is like, there's no way there is no friggin' way that happened without some, you know, actual material help that they, you know, they rigged something up or they put fishing line or whatever. Then the other part of my brain is just wants to believe that <laughs> actually would be so cool. <laughs> I really would. <laughs> Go out the door. Like that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, so I was thinking, oh, that's got podcasts written all over it. But indeed, there are 10. There are 10. <laughs> that I could find fast or maybe. <laughs> uh, I'm just intrigued by the fact that this happened in Toronto. There's probably still people living who were there. Yeah. And I, I kind of, I, I have half a mind to like look up, look it up and kind of find out more about that it. That would be amazing. <laughs> well, I do a little mini doc. <laughs> it would be a great mini doc. One of the guys, Joel Witten, I think his name was. Mm -hmm. He was the psychologist who was behind the experiment. And he later, I did a little Googling about him. And he mm -hmm. later, like, gave testimony as part of these, uh, like, child abuse trials that was mm -hmm. found to be totally baseless. Like, mm -hmm. he was just, and he lied about his credentials. He was like, ah, yes, I have worked with the FBI, blah, blah, blah. And he hadn't. Um, and then <laughs> his lawyers were, were saying, oh, yeah, um, he was just under a lot of stress because his wife was undergoing cancer treatment. And it's like, ah, you know, <laughs> hmm. I, I, at the FBI, I don't know how you that is a muddy puddle. A very muddy puddle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if that's the person behind the ghost experiment, it brings up even further doubts, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess, I, I mean... I don't find it. I don't find it that. I find I find it not that surprising that it would have been a hoax. I read. I I I know Lizan that I went on to you about this book. Um, oh gosh, and I'm gonna forget the name of it because I had a person's name in it. But um, uh, oh no, it was it's it's called The Haunting of Alma Fielding. Uh, that I read last summer that I really, really liked, which is about um, a poltergeist case in England just before the Second World War. And uh, the, the ghost hunter who sort of befriended this woman and became her like Svengali almost trying to prove, trying to like use her as the test case to prove that um, that poltergeist existed. And ultimately it was, it was a hoax. It was, but like, it was very, it was a very hard hoax to figure out because it was, she had these very elaborate ruses and uh, like having read that, I'm like, and also, you know, magicians, <laughs> magicians exist. Like there are ways of doing these things very convincingly. Um, so I'm not, I'm not that weirded out. I, like, I don't know how they did it, but I'm not that confused by the idea that the, the like that there could be a way of doing it. I'm, I'm really interested by the idea that it's like they, they knew like there was no ghost. There could not have been a ghost because they invented the ghost. <laughs> but that, but I also think like having said that, I think probably there was like, you know, some kind of hoaxing going on. There was also, I think from the sounds of it, like 
maybe there was one person moving the table and everyone else really be- like was completely mm. there right yeah. like <laughs> and it's that um it's that it's that leap of belief uh that's really interesting to me i guess if me i'm too. trying to try, to try to figure out like where where that's going yeah it's the the desire for some kind of experience that's outside of the frame of the ordinary so are yeah. you generally interested in this line of inquiry Nadia? who are you asking me <laughs> i'm i've yeah this is a, a big ongoing interest of mine i did um I got really, one of the things I got interested in when I was working on my unfinished PhD (laughs) was the history of psychology and psychiatry and how it really intersects and overlocks with that uh, psychical research thing and this sort of, this kind of of muddy gray areas (laughs) between the two lines of inquiry for a long time. And, you know, how there's, how a lot of things, a lot of our underlying assumptions under the, you know, the very scientific edifice of psychiatry right now are, are kind of rooted in ideas about <laughs> what the self is that haven't completely been explored or, or you know, uh, examined. Um, Are you saying it's a little bit spongy? <laughs> maybe, maybe a little spongy at the bottom, the yeah. But just, yeah, that sort of, that whole sort of, the, the, the gray area and just the the power of people's imaginations to yeah kind of shape what they're perceiving mm-hmm. to the extent that they can actually like live in a reality and i guess i, I feel also that we're like seeing really the dark t- turns that 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 can take these days as as people get kind of sucked into alternate realities that are upsetting and dark <laughs> but yeah that whole there's a whole sort of area it, it basically the philip experiment kind of like touches on so many things that i find super interesting <laughs> it's, it's, and it's just a cool story there was a, there were quite a few cults for some reason that cults mm. were a big thing in the 70s yeah. mm-hmm. um, and a yeah. lot of them had this kind of like uh psych or psychotherapy type well i guess that's too. what i why i raised that it, 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 yeah, yeah. it, it crossed over a little bit mm-hmm. yeah. the whole, yeah. whole therapy fields thing the whole thing yes that's what i was thinking of too yeah Mm -hmm. which is where what the the therapy school that i went to came out of Mm -hmm, because they're also toronto so we were like a hotbed of the stuff yeah Yeah, what was with you guys (laughs) (laughs) look at that look at that that's gorgeous we're looking at the yeah the this looks like very successful marzipan so it really does it's getting there. I accidentally added too much egg, so I'm having to add a ton uh-huh. of sugar to get it into an mm. actual. We all missed that. Chair. You get. could have just bluffed your way through it. I I can't lie. <laughs> <laughs> How does it taste? Have you tasted it yet? I haven't tasted it yet. I'm okay. Working myself <laughs> up to that. <laughs> I think it looks it looks tasty, and it's you know it's not like a bright green, but it's an edible. It's a food green. It's not like a why would I eat this is it, color? Is it? It's still sticky. I've got to add more sugar to it. <laughs> it's not even green at all. I I don't know if the camera is oh, okay. lying. It looks it's pretty like. Hang on, wait a minute. Let me let me. I'm gonna let me, go there with go. moss. There we go. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean the camera is cooling it quite a bit. It's sort of a oh, warm brown. It's actually oh, almost okay. the same color as my pants. All right. <laughs> well, that's a food color. I would believe that is food. <laughs> it is. I'm just, I'm a little nervous about how it's going to look when I actually add the food color. <laughs> oh. Hmm. I think it's going to look nice, actually. <laughs> It'll be a nice, oh. rich, warm kind of green brown. I think it's going to look good. It'll be a forest princess cake. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> a hippie princess. A hi- uh, the, yeah. Did the did the, the cake come out of the oven? Um, I am gonna check it. Golden brown started to shrink away from the sides of the tin. I think it's there. Okay. I'm getting hungry just uh, watching. I know I'm starving. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> it's killing me. I know it's hard to watch. <laughs> Nadia, and mm. Nadia, Nadia. When did you start this whole kitchen confidential kitchen party? Okay, so the, this got started in uh, uh, the uh, around Christmas time of 2020, when Jared announced that because um, he was going to spend Christmas alone, which because it was like it was right in the heart of the pandemic, and usually he spends Christmas with his family, he's going to spend Christmas alone. Jared, I hope you don't mind that I'm telling this whole story. Uh, no, that's fine. <laughs> um, 
And because it was, because, I mean, it wasn't alone. Jess was there, but like okay, but because because you were not going to be cooking for a crowd, you could experiment. <laughs> because yes. if something went wrong, only only like you and Jess would have to eat it. And so you were going to do you were going to cook a goose according to a medieval recipe. Uh, and you said this in the Slack, and I immediately was like, you have to live stream that. <laughs> <laughs> And so, and so we live streamed yes. it on Christmas Day, and it was so fun. I was like, "We should do, we should do more of this." And you, That's really great. you had all kinds of recipes you wanted to do, and yeah. <laughs> I want to know more about the medieval goose style of cook. Like, what? Yeah. How did you fill the goose? Um, it was filled with. Oh, geez. Um. Well, the video is probably up on YouTube somewhere if you want was to see it exactly. Was it twenty-four blackbirds? <laughs> <laughs> um, it was stuffed with um, ortolans, fruit. It was like apples and grapes, hmm. and I think something else. Hmm. Um, and then when it was done, all that stuff came out of the goose and was made into a sauce with, I think, some breadcrumbs and wine mm -hmm. and. Ooh spices and things um it was really good i overcooked it because i never made a goose before and no idea what i was doing yeah <laughs> but everything tasted good mm -hmm. you want um, you end up making stock eventually out of the carcass of the goose oh yeah so. <laughs> it was taking up space in my freezer for like almost a year <laughs> it required a large stock pot you oh, to God. i had to borrow my mom's which is big <laughs> enough to hold um at least one toddler at once <laughs> <laughs> Does your we never tried to fit a second one in, but you can fit one in there. <laughs> That's a really good parenting <laughs> hack. <laughs> oh, it wasn't our toddler. It wasn't like <laughs> it wasn't a relation. A random toddler. <laughs> you know Don't how go when you your babies, house. sometimes you just shove children into <laughs> cookware to see if they'll fit. <laughs> <laughs> you see that house over there, the one with the princess cake on the outside? <laughs> Don't go near there. Well, so, I mean, the reason we did it, um, I we were watching a friend's child. And <laughs> my older sister and I decided it would be hilarious to put this child into this big stock pot, put it on the stove, take a picture, and send it to his mother. So we did that. And how did the mother how was respond? He um, I think she just laughed. She knew who she was leaving her kid with. <laughs> <laughs> she knew the risks. <laughs> Very good. Oh, what a story. <laughs> so I think there's still a picture maybe somewhere on my Facebook or something of this kid, like, with his little hands on the rim of the pot, like, looking up, like, oh, am I in danger? <laughs> How old is that child now? <laughs> um... Oh, God, he's a teenager, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can embarrass him with it. <laughs> Weird to think about. He probably doesn't even remember. I might not even remember me. I haven't seen him in a long time. Hmm. Which maybe for the best <laughs> if he remembers that. <laughs> Sue, do you have siblings? I don't think I've ever asked you that. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, my God. <laughs> I come from a giant tribe. Oh, good. There's, there's, hey, same. So does Jared, yeah. <laughs> oh, Jared, you go first. Jared, how many siblings oh. do you have? Oh, the audio broke up, so I didn't hear the question. Um, okay. I have five siblings. Right. Yeah, so I've got seven. Wow. Oh, man. And then they've all got children. <laughs> oh, wow. And then they've all got children. Yeah. <laughs> it's no, a dynasty. Like my stepmother has nine brothers and sisters, and yeah, they she, all have your children. Stepmother wins. And they all have children. Yeah. I can't deal with it at all. Anyways, I don't. <laughs> I don't want to talk about my family at all. I want to talk about yours. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this year, I made myself a calendar map, so I could find where the breaks were when I didn't have to do oh. birthday presents. <laughs> Where where are you in the birth order, Sue? Which I'm the siblings? first. You're the first. Yeah, but uh, according to that birth order thing, I abdicated. So my sister Kathy, who is second, actually rules the roost. Oh. Yeah. Jared is second oldest, so he's yeah. It's a lot of younger siblings. What about so you, Nadia? No, I just have the one younger brother. <laughs> 
who lives who moved to California like over 20 years ago so we've ne we've never been terribly close and he's a bit like it's like six years younger than me but yeah. <laughs> hmm. so your stepmom Lizanne that's the chef's wife wow that's very yes that's right that's francophony right. what Frank is she French I don't know why I think that no no Scottish, very proud to be Scottish. Really oh, hmm. against everything Scottish. She's not a bad person. <laughs> I was so, I'm so done with her family's pro Scottish obsession. I just, oh man, we can't take. Jared, it. What, what are you opening? Is this the food coloring? No, this is more sugar. It's still, oh, okay. it's still very sticky, and it shouldn't be as sticky as it is. Hmm. It looks, it looks like it would be rollable though. If you can work with it, you could probably. Yeah. I just, just want to get it a little bit stiffer okay. before I um, work with it. Mm, okay. I can hear As the actress said to the bishop. <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, there's uh, there's dog action again happening off screen. So this is screen. Really, this is like sliding into the really chaotic hour right now. Uh, they've been pretty good so far. Yeah, they have been. Can we get a Rosie cameo? Can Rosie come here? Rose, where's the Rosie cam? Where's the Ro cam? Let me get Ro. Oh. <laughs> have you ever had pets, Nadia? I have not. I grew up with uh, cats in uh, the family home, mm. and I love cats. However, I'm allergic to them, so mm. I, it's, a, it's a problem. Um, I would like to have a cat anyway, but I haven't figured out how. I like. I, I live in a small apartment now, so sure. A, dander, and B, not a lot of room for a cat to move around. But um, yeah, I would like to have a cat. Dogs, mm. I like other people's dogs. They seem like, a, oh my goodness, look at this. Yeah, look at this look boy. At, look at a boy. Look at him. <laughs> Rosie, hello. Give us Rosie's origin story in a nutshell. <laughs> oh, um, well, it's actually pretty dark. Uh, oh. I'm going to leave out some of the gorier parts, but okay. he is from the Dominican Republic. He's I've had him for four months, maybe. Um, he had a very difficult past before I got him, but I didn't know that. I wasn't like in the market for a dog with a trauma oh. past. Um, but I wrote to the uh, rescue organization in, I mean, the shelter in um, Dominican that had mm -hmm. him. And I said, do you know anything about him, um, his past? And they were like, actually, he has a whole Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> I went and I looked at it and it was just that he had had some terrible things happen and they had to fundraise for surgery for him. Oh, but um, he's the most um, sweet and resilient and just great little guy. Mm. And uh, he does, his only fears are around dark. He's really quite scared of the dark. Um, I wonder where that comes from. Yeah, me too. It's very, mm. he, his whole body language shifts. And, and also like in the hallway, he's very skittish. Anyway, he just has certain skittish areas, but Aww. basically he's a super sweet little guy. I have um, met Ro and I did not I did not know he was a social media celebrity. <laughs> he's he's not. He's just uh uh he yeah, he uh, he was like a make a wish foundation dog kind oh. of. Huh? <laughs> um, and does he try to get behind you? Uh, so that you only can sit on your chair two inches no, in. He doesn't do that. He's too polite. But it's Holly's chair anyway. <laughs> he's sitting in the chair and I sit in it. He gets like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hero? Yeah. Oh. I love his muzzle. I love the dark bit. I know. He's such a good dog. <laughs> I love it. I also like where because because Holly Holly is an older dog and and you know pretty pretty chill in her ways and I, when you got Holly when when you got Ro Holly just was it was like it was like a new lease on life for her she's just she's just been so frolicsome since she was so frolicsome that Ro she pulled something in her shoulder <laughs> <laughs> a little well, too much, to little too much frolicking acupuncture and stuff but she's actually getting she's recovering from her injury her Aww. wrestling injury. 
but yeah, no, she's a, uh, they're, they're good. They're a good influence on each other. It's very nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You'll have to give Holly a wrestler's name. <laughs> <laughs> What'll it be, Holly? I think she, she'd have to be named after like a dinosaur or something. Holly like go that. heavily. Holly go. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Holly, Holly. Holly go heavily. She Holly goes slowly. <laughs> oh man. But oh yeah, gosh. she's fixing me right now with her with her mm, a certain kind of gaze that I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> yes, extremely expressive, aren't they? <laughs> uh, yeah, all hell is about to break loose uh with her, I can just tell. Oh, but oh. I'm not gonna look at her. We're fending it off. We're fending it off. Okay. Sue, so you your dogs are rescues also, right? Am I right about that? In a way. Um, <laughs> one we rescued from a, a farm out in, uh, uh, I don't know, out in Ontario, rural area, one, somewhere. And uh, when we showed up, uh, all the little kids had mohawks and they all tumbled out the back door of this farm. And all the puppies were in this outdoor half a shed, just freezing cold. And the mom was running up and down on the mom dog was running up and down on a <laughs> wire. Um, no. it was, and they're all the beer bottles from the night party before. So we brought Finn home and uh, my daughter, Trishy said, oh, I think this dog's a dud because she kept picking it up and it would flop on her lap. Aww. And then the next day he was this around trying broken. to eat everything and bite everything. And it turned out he was just cold. Oh, <laughs> And then Zachers, we rescued from a university student uh, in Guelph who <laughs> couldn't find a job here and had to go back to, I think, Australia. Mm -hmm. And the sign on Kijiji said, can somebody please come and get the best dog ever? And Ian said, yes, I'll, I'm, I'm there. <laughs> we got to go, Susan. It's the best dog ever. <laughs> okay. I met them recently. They are very fine dogs. But, yeah. but I like how everyone's dogs have the, have the most dramatic backstories. They just they really, like and, and and Holly Holly is the only one that we haven't talked about. And she's from Ohio. She is from Ohio. Yep, she comes from a country, a rural location in Ohio. And her story was that some old guy had them in the back of his property, and he never went out and he never checked on them, and they were starving, and that's why the Humane Society took them in. And mm -hmm. uh, but her, but her litter was so loopy that they, I think they had to be all put down except two of them. Aww. And yeah, because they were never, ever socialized and they were just right. everything. And then Holly ended up going into this prison program where the prisoners train the dogs using what? only positive reinforcement. It's actually a really great program. And it's That's great like, for prisoners because they get to have a dog for a little while. Yeah. They get to learn how to train using no negative, you know, and yeah. so it's very nice, but terrible for Holly. <laughs> but by the time I got her, she was just so just overwhelmed and she was just afraid of, you know, garbage oh. cans and street lights and traffic oh. signs and reality. You know, reality. Um, Once again, now, reality is pretty scary. <laughs> now she's in the living room just going nuts. Like, what is she doing exactly? Is she doing twirlies? No, she has other more crafty ways. She lies on the ground, writhing around, making snorting noises and biting like the table, basically. <laughs> uh, so... I can hear her. I've only ever seen her when she was refused, Nick. No, I'm not getting into the car. Yeah, no, I'm yeah. Not getting out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> I would prefer not to. <laughs> Bartleby the dog. Yes. Oh <laughs> Whoa! Oh, hold on. Okay, Whoa. we gotta. Oh. Let's just give that a spotlight. Yes. Look at, Look at it. What a. It has floofed. Floof around. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna put it in the freezer actually because it's really warm it's and I'm not gonna be able to assemble this otherwise mm -hmm. because of the way that camera goes i keep thinking that everything is going to fall off onto my head <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay so far so good though we have a cake that worked we have marzipan that is sweet but worked i mean marzipan's supposed to be sweet we have custard that looks pretty darn custody so yes <laughs> 
and it's just uh, unlike unlike the, the baked Alaska, nothing will melt when you you know when it reaches room temperature. So that's also probably makes well, you like I mean, a little bit cream. Mm, we could soften. Have you ever it. done pavlova, Jared, or anybody? Oh yeah, oh I've done that a few times. And mm. is it hard or easy? It's so easy. Is it? It was so popular yeah. there for a few years. Hmm. Did you do it with passion oh, fruit? I've got a whipped cream. Um, <laughs> did I? No. Yeah. Um, I've done it with plums, with a cardamom whipped cream, mm. and some lemon zest, and some custard. And I've done it with, um, shoot, now I can't remember. <laughs> um, but I really like it. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think I'd like to get a very rapid, uh, like, lightning round of the best fruits, uh, according to everyone. Like, oh. what are you? Pressure. No, I'm like, it's not, yeah. it's not definitive, Sue. It's not going to be tied to you for the rest of your life. <laughs> it totally <laughs> is. It's going to come out the back of my head like the kite of a tail, a tail of a kite. No, it's just in the moment. Hmm. Well, I really love pomegranate seeds. You do? Mm. Yeah. Wow. Because it's a sort of novelty act. Yes. And the color of the of the liquid is so exquisite. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. With you on that. I I I think I like strawberries and pineapples, and mangoes probably. But I can never figure out how much scarcity is driving up value. You know. <laughs> I like re I like real strawberries, but those yeah. giant things you get. No. Those yeah. Rock hard mm -hmm. monsters that could hold a door open. <laughs> No, those are terrible in every way. I've heard that strawberries have basically the worst, the worst record. They have the worst pesticides, the worst oh, uh, yeah. carbon footprint, the worst everything. They're just terrible. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. They can be so good. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, th I'm sitting here thinking that my favorite, my favorite fruit is whatever is like fresh picked whatever i can eat like right off the bush or the tree <laughs> like raspberries and strawberries if you can actually like pick them in yeah. if you're in the garden or whatever yeah. they're yeah. so amazing yeah and fresh fresh local strawberries wild strawberries i don't think i've had since i was a kid but they're the, the like the tiny perfect ones yeah like, so, so off good. the ground yeah mm -hmm. um, it's amazing oh but yeah on. i have to deal with the dog there's something really something's going on in the other room but i don't know okay. what <laughs> dog situation uh let, let me just for a moment jared what is the, what is the oh you're doing the whipped cream i am amazing so you'll probably have to meet yourself again i'm gonna guess yeah <laughs> yeah fair enough unless you really want to listen what is is it is it just plain cream or does it have sugar or any kind of uh it is just else? plain cream oh, i see which is good because everything else is going to be so sweet buttery and sweet yes <laughs> yeah I'm gonna... here's Lizanne. here's Lizanne. she looks like she's gonna go here are you gonna go <laughs> um yeah, that bolt written all over her i'm about to bolt <laughs> i just it's it's hard to concentrate with the whatever's going on in there sure. mm -hmm. Okay, if you if you like get outside and I mean I know Rosie actually likes to run around, but I know Holly is also done about five minutes after leaving the house. If you if you want to come back and it's not or it's we're we're probably going to be here like a few minutes over because Jared has to assemble the cake. So if you want to hop back on, that would be great. <laughs> All right, I'm I well basically what it is right now. You're getting really into the like nitty gritty of my life, but. The dogs usually get fed between 5 and 5.30, but they okay. start agitating for it way earlier. <laughs> and I, I will not feed them just because they're asking to be mm, fed, but right. they create so... Well, Holly. I shouldn't say they. Holly. Holly. So much chaos in the lead up <laughs> that it's impossible to concentrate. Okay. So that's what's going on. I'm just waiting until I can feed them at some indeterminate... <laughs> at some point that doesn't constitute giving in <laughs> yes i usually try to feed her when she stopped being chaotic because i don't ah. want to think that's a way to get what she wants mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. so anyway that's the stage of things that we're in right now 
Okay. So you can you can hang out if you want to mute yourself and just like yeah maybe I'll, just, I'll mute to like deal with dog stuff on and off. <laughs> okay. Um, but I do want to see how the uh, how the cake ends up yeah. working out. What's what's he doing right now? Is that he's whipping the cream? Okay. So the whipped cream is <laughs> going to go inside the cake. I think, yeah, I think it's going to be mixed with the custard and go inside the cake and the like there's going to be a dome of of green or or I don't know sort of <laughs> close to green mar marzipan over the top of it. We are actually I mean like this is this this is going to go over. Sometimes we hit like right at, at the 2 hour mark and sometimes it goes over a bit. I think we're we're a while away <laughs> from assembly at this point. Completed product? Yeah. So uh so we will well, see. I might have to, it goes. I might have to see the completed product as a reveal somewhere mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i'm gonna jared can you uh, uh, uh he's i don't know if this is a good point in the process yes what uh how how what's your eta at this point how far away i genuinely don't know okay. um it would have been <laughs> sooner if i hadn't ended up taking so long on the marzipan right mm -hmm. okay um it kind of depends <laughs> on how long this takes to whip <laughs> but once once that's whipped is it is it all gonna come together is that the plan i'm just God, wondering I how so. I, so. <laughs> I haven't even made the rose for the top yet oh no epic we'll fail see. we'll see i've been I busy for one, i for one will stick around but you know we we may we may lose we may lose some guests on the way <laughs> which is fair you were you did not sign up for <laughs> an all-day date <laughs> an all-day baking an all-day baking experience um but yeah okay so lisanne is is waiting for her dogs to <laughs> waiting for the point when she can appease the dogs <laughs> without, without giving into the clock <laughs> <laughs> but I, I know i know the drill because i don't feed the dogs ian does and they will be dancing mm -hmm, they will be going mm -hmm. there yeah. So I figured you had like a co-dog parent, so you were <laughs> <laughs> off the you could be off the hook for a few hours. <laughs> yeah. um, um, that's the fruit though. There's um the beautiful mm -hmm. tomatoes in the fall. Mm -hmm. There's nothing else like them. They're, they're, again, they're they're I you know, you get these salads in the winter and they're just rock hard. And mm -hmm. also, um what else is good? Are you growing some tomatoes in your own garden? Boumois? No, we have no sun. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. It's the heartbreak of my life that I've got this lovely yard, but no sunshine. It's pretty big, the backyard. I know, mm -hmm. but I, because I went through that tree nerd phase and I immediately went out and got, what did I get? Oh, a red bud. Mm. <laughs> and it just went like this. <laughs> and everything green died. Oh. oh. <laughs> But at least you have shade. That's nice. <laughs> yes, and I, I, I do appreciate it on the hotter days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, I wish I had. I don't have sun either anywhere. Um, I did try growing tomatoes last year, and I got maybe like six little, yeah. like little little ones. Where did um, you grow them? Did you have um, a a a deck or something? No, I actually grew them in the front yard. There's like one mm. little patch of the front yard that gets a little more sun, but it's still like only mm. partially sunny. Yeah. And I think what happened is their skins stay really, really thick. Like mm. there's things oh. that happen when they're not in the sun. Yeah. Um, they're just not as nice, but uh, they were still, I mean, I still love a homegrown tomato. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They are. They're the best. And they also not, they have a kind of different texture. They're softer or something. They're so good. I think yeah. I actually do. I think maybe I gotta take Holly out. She's right. going downstairs again. All right, so I'll be back. Okay, I'll see, I'll see who's back when I come back. We'll see. <laughs> okay, Jess is saying homegrown cherry tomatoes are the best, but they do make you never want to buy them from the store ever again. It's yeah, cool. I agree. Jess had a had a um, what is it? A lot in a garden this summer. She you did. Posting. Jess did who logger oh, son. <laughs> I've always wanted to do that, but I, I don't have the staying power. She was posting a lot of pictures of it on her Instagram and oh, it looked nice. very very verdant and successful. This is something's happening. Something is happening. <laughs> something exciting is happening. The cake, da, 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 da. Which God, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Gotta cut <laughs> this. This is about I don't know, maybe two inches mm -hmm. wide. Yeah, and I have height. to cut this into three 
layers. Ooh. Oh boy! Could you use apparently. like a? Uh, could you use um yeah, bit, 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 like dental floss or something? <laughs> uh, not you know for what I mean? this. No, okay. Yeah, that would be more for like like raw bread dough. I think. Yeah, I don't think it would work mm -hmm. for this. Okay. Cut the cake horizontally into three even layers. I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> With a short knife, you wouldn't use a long one. This is, I mean, this is the longest um, right. knife I have that would be good for this kind of thing because it's okay. serrated. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So you know, Wait, this can be in in college. In, you know, I went to art school, and I was always I got really good grades on ideas. <laughs> I always got terrible <laughs> grades on actual craft. Like everything I cut with an exacto knife always had little white edges and little, like you know, little thorny bits coming off of it. It's like this is this is nightmarish. <laughs> Okay. AP is here. We're all watching you, Jared. <laughs> Great. <laughs> that makes me feel so good. <laughs> the mortifying ordeal of being. I think enough. we need to have some some big music here right now. Yeah, it's true. Hang on, hang on. I might be able to I might be able to make it happen. Uh, this is not gonna have very even layers. I can tell you that right now. Oh, this is like, this is not, this is not dramatic enough. <laughs> like we've got a soundtrack. <laughs> Gotta have a soundtrack. <laughs> it doesn't have to be totally even. Beautiful. There we go. That's actually Look at that. That's yeah. stunning. Yeah. <sighs> oh, this is I've never I've never actually cut a cake into layers. That's impressive. <laughs> I'm actually making this soundtrack with this. It looks good. This must be your art school background. Well, exactly. I mean, you must have learned something, even if you weren't getting the grades. <laughs> Only after I graduated. <laughs> this is sculpture, sculpture studio class. <laughs> no, see, I would have gotten away with whatever the hell in sculpture because <laughs> it would have been fine. It was because I took, I was, I majored in graphic design. They mm. were all about precise edges and... Okay, this layer is going to be very sad. Oh, 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 AP says it's gorgeous just like you. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> and is it cool? Um, it's lukewarm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Ooh, this is so delicate. Okay, so that's that. Now I have to do the jam and the the rim of custard. Oh, I wow. <laughs> um, I just want to climb through this camera and have this delicious cake. Okay. <laughs> Enough of that. <laughs> custard. Um... I have to, do not have enough space for everything that I'm doing. <laughs> This is a, here we go. Nightbot reminds me to remind you, <laughs> if you are watching this at home, Megaphonic is also a podcast network. That's how we all met. Uh, Megaphonic.fm for fancy little shows with Chris, Mikey, Jared, not me so much anymore, but this is what I'm doing now <laughs> in the awesome. Megaphonic universe. Yeah. Jared, for those of you who I don't know might be watching and don't know, Sue, you might not know this. Jared has Jared is one third of uh, By the Bywater, which is a podcast on all things Tolkien. Oh, oh, <laughs> uh, you mentioned it, and I looked it up. That's right. Ah, yes, there you uh -huh. go. <laughs> I told I told a barista at my local coffee shop about <laughs> the podcast because she was getting a tattoo of the sword that was broken. Like, oh wow, yeah. Arm, and it looks really cool. Um, mm -hmm. And I was like, well, one of my podcast co-hosts has like Lord of the Rings tattoos. And she was like, oh, you've got a Tolkien podcast? And I was like, yeah. So then that was a couple weeks ago. And then yesterday I ran into her again and she was like, so your podcast is really cool. 
do you ever start talking more? And I went, oh, no. <laughs> Don't start at the beginning. Those are the bad episodes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you talk fairly regularly in the, the ones that I've heard that are more recent. I yeah, think. the more recent ones. Well, I mean, I say more recent, but like after the first two or three, I finally figured out how to be a podcaster. Um, <laughs> I think. It takes a while but, to yeah. get your sea legs, I think. Yeah. And I only say that as somebody who is a podcast fanatic, uh, not that I've ever tried one. Okay. Would you, are you interested in doing, I, I, I feel, see, I feel like you've, you've brought this up that you might be interested in doing a podcast at some point. Oh, uh, I say it all the time, but I also say a million other things. All the time, so. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't take anything I say with uh, anything less than a grain of salt. <laughs> So I was going to ask you, I was actually going to ask both you and Lizanne, but I, I know she, she mentioned that she kind of, she kind of got into newspapers by mistake, as it were. Or not, yeah, I tried not, to fall into them. I was going to ask you about the whole newspaper thing and how yeah. that, how you got started and what it was like when you started and how it's different now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just incredibly briefly. Um, I started, I really wanted to be an editor in book publishing, but there were mm -hmm. almost no spots at that time. Yep. Maybe still five, <laughs> six, I don't know, not very mm -hmm. many. So I worked in publicity for a couple of years. And then I switched, I, I got some bunches, you know, I kept picking away at small contracts. Mm -hmm. And then I went to work for a crazy guy from Russia named George Yemek. Although his name was Yuri. And his magazine was called Millions Magazine. Huh. So I worked there, and it was all drive? about gambling. And uh, it was during the run up in the 80s. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a very long and I'm not going to bore you with it. But at any rate, I kept leaping. And I realized that mm. I didn't like magazines because it was boring <laughs> um, and you do everything at the last minute anyway. And then I went to weeklies and then I went to the iWeekly and then a friend of mine um, said, there's a maternity leave at the Globe and Mail. Would you like mm. to come? And then they offered me a job and that put me in. And then I was like, I love the daily. <laughs> oh yeah. Cut and print and I get to go home and think it all uh, about it all again tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> So that was the, explain a little bit more what was better about the, the, the daily as opposed to the weekly or the, the monthly. Really? <laughs> it's not that interesting. Oh, okay. You spend a lot of time agonizing over a copy that everybody's going to tear apart at the last minute. So you've got a whole month to pick away at it, work with your you know author and that type of thing. It, for my attention span, it was just, I, I couldn't do it. Mm. Um, with the weekly, you just got to run flat out and then, yeah. end it, and then you do, you cut, you print, you write a headline, you go home, you forget about it. That made me happy. Oh, jam is happening. Look at this. Jam is look going at this on jam. A... <laughs> what kind of jam, Jared? Raspberry. Very the good. only kind of jam. Raspberry oh, do we have, dressing. do we have jam opinions on the, on the stream? I, raspberry is my favorite, obviously. So that's Lizanne my jam opinion. is back. Opinion. I feel like Lizanne will have a jam opinion. <laughs> well, my jam opinion is more complete. It's that I don't really think jams are okay. Oh, <laughs> oh! <laughs> I think that <laughs> nice and contrarian. I think fruit fruit should be eaten fresh and not <laughs> altered by heat in any way. But I understand that jams were used uh, as a traditional preserve. Yes. You know? But you would have a jam. bit of berries, so you had to do something with them. Mm -hmm. Blackberry, eh? I don't know about that. Oh, and uh, vote, vote <laughs> for apricot. I really like apricot, apricot too. Apricot jam is very good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Also, also a vote for Jared's arms <laughs> from Haiti <from AP> again. <laughs> <laughs> All that lounging around doing nothing is really paying off. <laughs> Making, not nothing. <laughs> um, how did we even get onto this? I was distracted by jam, which is beautiful and distracting. You were talking about newspapers, Lizanne, uh, what, I, I was, I was, I had leaped into the, the onto the newspaper topic and ask. I was asking uh, Sue about how how she got into newspapers, how newspapers have changed since she got into them. What's it like in the world of newspapers? Tell us non-newspaper -news people. 
No bueno, guys. No bueno. No bueno. No no bueno. bueno. <laughs> it's gonna, I didn't. I figured things were not going well, given that you know paper. I, when was the last time I even saw someone reading a paper newspaper? Lucien, <laughs> do I have this wrong? I seem to remember that you were working at Chatelaine and came to try the Globe. I came. Um, I interviewed for a position as an editor on the Life section, but I didn't even know what the Life section was. And I came in and I had all these ideas about what I thought it was. It was a disaster. I mean, it wasn't like I, it wasn't like I shat the bed in the interview or anything, but I'm sure it came off as relatively smart, but just totally uninformed. Cause I never worked in newspapers. I didn't care about newspapers. I just needed an editing job. Um, and so I didn't get that job, but then later <laughs> I was called about the job to work with you. Mm -hmm. Um, which was copy editor on the Globe TO, the Weekend Tor Toronto section, RIP. Yeah, um, RIP. That was fun. It was, <laughs> oh, I had yeah. such good times at the paper at the beginning, and now it's just like. Right. It's, it's like that for everybody. All these young journalists who get hired on, and they do seem to keep getting hired. I can't figure out how it's the staff so small but they're all so excited and i don't like to disabuse them of the arc i know where it's i finally got to the globe i'm kind of getting a bit bored with the globe the globe is making me really angry <laughs> i hate the globe <laughs> Tear it all down burn it all down I, parenthetically jared so that was a layer you piped something around and then you filled it with jam and that was the what were the layers so um layer of cake a thin layer of the custard, okay. and then um, a border of custard to contain the jam. Okay. And then some jam. Mm -hmm. And then um, a bunch of the whipped cream went into the rest of the custard, mm. which is going to be um, the layer on top of this right. bit of cake. Okay. And then I think it's last layer, rest of the whipped cream. Damn. Or that rest of, it looks like bon mama. Yeah. Oh, the jam. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The bon mama yeah. jam. Mm -hmm. It is, yeah. I'm just going to keep this on because it is it is mesmerizing to watch uh, while we keep talking about how newspapers have gotten really depressing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, what would you what would you say to like young people who are thinking of going into like the newspaper world, just like run away? <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I would never ever dissuade somebody from doing something they wanted to do, mm -hmm. even if right. I felt like the the industry would ring you out and kill you. I think you have to figure that out for yourself. <laughs> maybe you'll thrive. Who knows? Right, like, right. You're gonna love it. Or maybe mm -hmm. it'll be a, uh, like a, an avenue to something you didn't expect you would love to do. Yeah. Like, so I just feel like, yeah, I would never discourage anybody. Right. But it's just like, and also they're not coming into it having had, having known how it was to work there 15 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Well, There's no letdown. Yeah. Hmm. But um, especially in a cool building with all the maps and clocks on the wall and that funny little um, room that was for if you needed to do something religious. Multi-faith prayer room. It was. Yeah. You had to go down a long hall. It was like it was like something out of Tolkien. It was so lost. and You, you could find it maybe, but you'd never find your way back. Yes. <laughs> Also, the multi-faith prayer room was like formerly a cargo loading area. Ah, how'd that feel? The lawn chairs really made it. Yeah, it was this cavernous, like probably two-story high ceiling, uh -huh. a windowless, and it had a loading door. And it was very cold in there because I guess it wasn't insulated. Right. I really think it was literally where supplies would come in when they were still printing the paper out of that building, which they stopped doing and so i think the truck was supposed to pull up there and open the you know and everything would come in there anyway it had plastic patio furniture in it that i guess you could worship from like the whole <laughs> thing was so sketchy i would go in there if i had terrible menstrual cramps i remember that and i was I would in just there. go in there if i wanted to scream <laughs> scream. that's a that's a form of devotional worship right yeah. <laughs> just screaming into the void <laughs> i remember being being in there like lying lying on the floor i think on on some sort of gym mat because that was the other thing there were those gross blue gym mats 
in there. And I was lying on one of those under my coat, like, oh. <laughs> and then some guy came in who legitimately wanted to use it to pray in. And I was in there and it was this weird standoff. <laughs> Wait, but it was, was it not big enough for two people or could he just not oh, pray no, while you were like lying not, on the ground? We we're going to share. <laughs> it was definitely big enough, but awkward. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Prepare for prayer. (laughs) This is the building that they demolished for the giant, like, multi-use condo development, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Oh boy. (laughs) And the it was the doors at the front were they from the original original news? Yeah, there were these incredible doors. They were beautiful. Those doors. They were beautiful. They were from the '30s, I think. Yeah, I loved those doors. There was also a um, this little tree uh, outside the building, and, and one day I was coming into work, and there was a little sign under the little tree, and you could only read the sign if you like walked right up to it. Mm-hmm. And I walked up to it, and it said, <laughs> "Caution: Do not approach this tree. There is a, <laughs> there is a kill deer living in the tree that will attack your head." And that's exactly what. <laughs> <happened>. <laughs> <laughs> idea it was to put that sign there but it was t- with tiny letters <laughs> gold so i just like put up a, so put up a webcam <laughs> so they could just like there were just there were two everything. smoking rooms at one point and one was completely sealed up there was no window no and the guys from business would go in there or the copy editors and they would play this thing called garbage trash where they would take a paper and throw it into a basketball pretending they were playing basketball and then the the smoking room got moved to the cafeteria and then it got moved to the outdoor front deck and then it got moved to the parking lot it was (laughs) then it was like russia we were all putting (laughs) our our own like scarves and walking down to go to the street oh my Um, god days when you could smoke in the building (laughs) wow But that smoking room was like, somebody compared it once to an opium den because you could hang out with the senior staff and get some inside <laughs> intel. That's pretty cool. Huh. Uh, I have to mute and deal with dogs again. Hold on. Okay. I might, I might bail at this point, Nadia. Okay. Yeah, oh, we, we, are, we are a quarter after five. All right. It's been really quite wonderful. Oh, God. Really? Oh, no. <laughs> Jared, I'm sorry. I, I, I want. I'll get the big reveal later. Mm-hmm. Well, That's fine. This is taking much longer than I thought it would. <laughs> All right. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday night. <laughs> Thanks for dropping in, Sue. This is really, yeah, really fun you. to have you My on. Pleasure. <laughs> I know. Bye. Thanks, Sue. Bye. <laughs> Bye. I will stick around. We can like put it. Put a vote to the, to the comments whether people want to. I mean, I'm fine with remaining until you because <laughs> you're getting close to the basically it's just the marzipan at this point right um yeah i mean technically there's still the fondant rose i'm not worried about the fondant rose that but, can go yeah, on after. like there's, there's decoration <laughs> that has to happen but i really just mm-hmm. want to get the marzipan on yeah i think we can um, I think so we i've got to like, roll that out yeah keep going until you until you like put on the marzipan and then we'll, we'll call it we'll call it a night because we're we're quite close to that and but it is yeah. 5 15. <laughs> Okay. Just got to make some room to roll it out. <laughs> All of our guests have left. I don't know. It's... <laughs> What's exciting in your life, Jared? <laughs> uh, nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing going on. <laughs> I got a cool shirt. I got a cool new yes. shirt. <laughs> you like, and not, not even you got more than one because you're wearing one. Um, I'm wearing one. I got another one. No, I got two other ones. <laughs> it's been that kind of year. It's retail therapy. Oh, <laughs> uh, are you gonna are you gonna roll it out on the? Do you have like a board or is it? Going I do not a have a board. Okay. It's got to roll out pretty wide because it's got to mm. cover the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm hoping it actually rolls. I'm not convinced that it will. Hmm. Well, this is where we this is where we find out whether it's just going to taste good or whether it, in fact, will also look good. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's just going to taste good at this point. I'm not <laughs> holding out a lot of hope for the actual finish. <laughs> it's going to be sad. Um, I couldn't even get it. I added 
food coloring and it just was not was not greening so hmm, hmm. whatever it'll be do fine do you do you want to keep going with the stream do you feel like you can like roll out the marzipan now and and yeah so yeah i'm just okay. i had to wipe up a bunch of stuff so i'm letting this dry before i actually put anything on it okay um, yes so for people watching at home this is this is the first time i think that we've kind of gone over a bit in in terms of time uh and our guests have left <laughs> although, although lizanne might come back dogs it, it, it's it's contingent on on how the dogs feel um and i'm sitting here going like what can i what can i what can I talk about? Yeah. I, I mean, this is it? as close. I mean, I've gone, we've gone over before, but this is as uh -huh. close as we've gotten to like going way over because this is not really <laughs> that this done. The last time I rushed something was the big Alaska and that turned out, you that know, that did not, that was, that, that ended poorly. rushing. That was a mistake. <laughs> yes. Jess asks, will this be the longest episode yet? I think it, I think it will. <laughs> we shall see. Oh, what else do you want to, what's in our future in terms of things you want to cook, Jared? Um, good question. I know, you know, we kind of alternate sweet and savory. Mm -hmm. So that kind of narrows it down. I think, oh, you know what? I had a really good idea a few weeks ago and forgot to write it down, which means I functionally had no idea. <laughs> I still want you to make jingle up hats because they are, they look oh, fun and yeah, tasty. Oh yeah, that's right. They're Armenian and they're called Jingalov hats. <laughs> it's so funny that, like, <laughs> that that's apparently just a word. <laughs> like, Is it? Hats, and it doesn't hats. mean hats. It means no. a thing. It means something it means else. Something else. <laughs> they kind of look yeah. like they could be hats if you, you know, used your imagination. But yeah, they're yeah. like basically uh, like. Uh, not, not 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 dumplings, larger than dumplings, but uh, kind of like um, dough filled with vegetables, sort of thing. What are they called, like paratas or something? Where it's a, a dough that's it's like a flatbread that's filled mm -hmm. with stuff. Yeah, I yeah. I think mm -hmm. that's what a parata is, and that's kind of what the what the hats are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of a stuffed bun, like many cultures have. So those are always good. They get like lunch things. Yeah, mm. I'm gonna. So the cake has to chill for a little bit. Okay. before I try to put the marzipan on. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just going to, while that's happening, um, it's supposed mm -hmm. to have a base, around the base, it's supposed to have some whipped cream piped. So I'm mm -hmm. just going to do that because I have time to whip it right now, so I might as well. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to mute for a second. So you got to vamp. <laughs> this is all on you. What's, what's new with you, Nadia? What's happening? <laughs> oh, my God. I have to improvise. I don't know. Uh, well, I was thinking earlier... <laughs> If Jared's see if Jared's brand is fancy, my brand is basically dumpster raccoon. And if I had a cooking show, it wouldn't be like, what can you cook that is fancy? It would be more, um, how can I make a tasty meal out of these vegetables that have been in the back of my crisper for three months and are kind of limp, but probably still good. So <laughs> um I did make such a casserole earlier, and we were talking about it before because I was still eating it when we when we entered the stream. Um that was, uh, I spiralized a bunch of vegetables and made a casserole with, um, is it, uh, corn tortillas, black beans, salsa mixed with um, pureed tomatoes and some cheese and a lot of vegetables that had been, that had been spiralized. And that was like an A plus, an A plus casserole. Uh, and I, I will show you something else actually, since I need to entertain. <laughs> so, I got a bunch of, of carrots that were limp and sad. Um, and I was like, can I revive them by putting them in water? And I put them, I put them in a you pitcher of water. Are you saying the carrots bledded? The carrots were like in, in, in nearly a, a close, close to a bled stage. I have to be really careful because uh, I have this phobia of water anywhere near my, my laptop. But um, so they were like super limp. They were, they were the kind of limp where you pick one up and it kind of limp. Uh, and that was on... Thursday night, so it's Saturday now, so they've been in water since then, and uh, if I can pick one up, they, these are, these are like firm and happy carrots. <laughs> there's, a, there's, also, there's, there's a joke in here, there's a, like, what is it, there's a vicar and, a, and, 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 <laughs> 
the act the actress and the vicar joke is in here as well but they're yeah they're nice and they have re they have returned to their their optimal condition just by sitting prettily in water so if you have carrots that are limp in your crisper just put them in water for like and it, it, you know I, I had them in there for a couple hours and nothing was happening and it was like is this going to work but two days <laughs> So you're just reviving them, or are you going to like, plant them? No, I'm going to eat them. <laughs> they are eatable. They're they don't. What, this is what I'm saying is they're still good. See if I if I had a <laughs> if I had a cooking stream, it would be like it's still good. <laughs> That'd be the name of the of the stream. Uh, you can cut the brown parts off. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's been. Um, since Jared is still is still whipping, <laughs> I will continue continue to say. So there's there's an app uh, that you can download, um, and it's I think it's in Britain and across North America. So wherever you're watching this, uh, you can probably you can probably do it. It's called it's called Too Good to Go, um, and what it does is look at this <laughs> vegetable necromancy would be a good name for a cooking show. <laughs> I would watch that yeah. actually. <laughs> I think I think I think both of the people still on this stream would watch that. <laughs> it's a good name for a stream. <laughs> yes, right? It's still good. So and I was yeah, so I was gonna say, so there's this app called Too Good to Go that I've been mildly obsessed with. And what it does is um like small businesses, grocery stores, corner stores, restaurants can sign up with it, and uh at the end of the day they uh, put what they have that they can't sell that's going to spoil and go off and have you throw out, thrown out into a bag and you can buy a surprise bag for, it's supposed to be about a third of the price that the food would sell for otherwise. So I've been getting a lot of my vegetables this way because the best thing is the vegetables because they can't, like you go to the, these like small, they're, they're like small grocery stores um, and like the kale will be kind of like limp or the, the lettuce will wilt a little bit. And so they can't sell it because it looks wilty so they would probably have to throw it out. So, you, so I get like the equivalent of a CSA bag for five bucks and it's all just a little bit wilted. So all of it, like you just have to put it in water <laughs> for a while, perks up again. There you go. I just, I remember being, uh, when I first was living in my own in a uh, graduate residence, like many, many years ago, living with other people who had never lived on their own before. And they'd be like, this will, this lettuce is wilted. I guess I got to throw it out. And I'm like, what, what, why would you? No, <laughs> that's not, it's fine. Okay, Lizanne is back. Yay. Hello. Sorry, I was just, I was, oh, you are, you have to unmute yourself. I was free associating, Lizanne, because we have, <laughs> <laughs> it was just uh, me. So what stage are we at? Oh, he's rolling out the marzipan. He's rolling out the marzipan. Yep. Yeah, this is going to be the longest version of the stream ever, and Sue had to go home, but we, I, we we're going to stick around for the marzipan part of this of this project i went so, in the, i went in the kitchen and uh holly had eaten half a piece of cheesecake so yeah <laughs> anyway someone's um, enjoying baked goods yeah so, okay so we're gonna see you we're gonna see jared drape this over the top of the dome the, i believe that's the plan yeah that is the shape, plan do you shape the marzipan so that it will Shape and, no, shape so you've got to you've got to roll it out um, as basically as wide as it will go without tearing. I think. Mm, okay. Um, and I have so little space here; I'm not sure I'll hit it. Mm. Um, and then drape it over the cake and just kind of trim around. Okay. So, uh, Jared, I have a question. So, I imagine that's pretty sticky stuff. How do you keep things from sticking to it, and yet at the same time still have like a presentable sur surface? for the marzipan? Um, it's actually not sticky now. Oh, OK. Um, oh, I, see, I, I, see. I put a bunch of powdered sugar on it to keep it from sticking, which I may not have needed to do. So now this is going to look pretty tragic, I think. Oh, is, that <laughs> the, is that the outside of it? Um, both sides are going to have white powder all over them. Oh, OK. Maybe they can the brush it off or something. Yeah, the bottom side will probably look less powdery, I would imagine. Well, Just, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Stupid. I keep nudging my computer. Right? <laughs> <laughs> There's only so far for it to go. Yeah. This looks like pie crust. <laughs> 
It is, yeah, it's a little pie crusty feeling. Huh. Yeah, how does it feel with to work with? Is it very, it looks very doughy. It's very doughy. It's very pliable. It holds a shape pretty well, I think. So I mm -hmm. managed to make it work somehow. Do you think almonds might be, I don't know if this is true at all. Do you think almonds might be oilier than pistachios? And would that be a factor in the texture? Um, it's definitely a factor. I don't know if they're actually oilier, but I know that mm. fat is an important component. Right of this so if you use a different nut beside you know something that's not almonds mm -hmm. um it can affect oh 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 it's happening it's 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 happening ish ish <laughs> it did stick to the table a little bit so yeah how could it not really... oh this is so nerve -wracking. this is really heavy actually huh well that's interesting Oh, 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 oh. Oh, it started to tear a little bit. It looks like suede. Yeah, like <laughs> a chamois. A chamois, yeah. <laughs> chamois. Really have no space. This is, this is somehow more ambitious than the opera cake was, just in terms of, like, <laughs> logistics. Right. right. Oh, oh it's very... tearing. It's tearing. Oh, no. Oh, no. No. You can always bundle it back up again, though, can't yeah. you? Yeah. I'm just handling it too much. It's going to... Mm. Can't you just behave? <laughs> <laughs> this is the hardest and most dramatic part. Yeah, and I think... Oh, uh, you know, quote, unquote, real marzipan mm -hmm. probably wouldn't be doing this. Mm. Um. It looks, it I looks don't know. pretty good, considering all things considered. It's just so hard to... <gasps> yeah, I say just do it quickly. Just do it. Oh, just do it. There. Oh, it's so messy. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't quite make it. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a... You know what? It's fine. I'm going to eat it. <laughs> I will. All right. I have seen the ectoplasm cake. Okay. Yes. It is ecto ectoplasmic. <laughs> it's so terrible. <laughs> um, we'll just trim. Huh. So that all that extra skirt stuff you're trimming off, you could just like drape over it again? Um, I could, but that would make for a very thick layer, so I don't know if I will do that. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think you should shape it into little little fishes, little little fruits and, and animals. Uh, I trimmed it too close, some of the cream's showing. No. Make a make a roll of do do like a a, a neat little roll. Like roll out a, a strip and, and put it around and it'll look like you meant to do that. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go because this is too tragic. No, not really. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm just gonna go. Uh, okay. Nice to yeah, see it you is. guys. Thank you for thank you for for coming and thank you for staying till five thirty. <laughs> I know I know yeah. it's like a dog a dog stressing kind of situation, but the dogs yeah, were great. God. The dogs were troopers. They're still milling about. Okay. Okay. <laughs> see you guys later. Bye. <laughs> okay, so this looks really bad. <laughs> um all right so see, yeah, put it in a place where can we can see, see there, the one whole yeah. one whole side is just a mess oh, and one oh. side is very <laughs> neat and nice okay photograph it from the nice side photograph it from its oh i'm going side. to um i'm just gonna you know there's i'm just gonna gild this lily and put some of the whipped cream around you know pipe it around all neatly and yes, then i'm gonna yes. eat it and we'll okay. get that money shot and then we'll be done <laughs> okay <laughs> So this is still, I mean, it's not melting. That's 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 a good a good sign. It's it's still basically it does not look like the 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 official princess cake of the Swedish government. No but... no 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 no. They would not um <laughs> this doesn't exactly promote tourism, I think. Rebecca says it, it's like the first face <laughs> transplant. Ambition, amazing and ambitious, but not perfect. <laughs> 
<laughs> really this can't argue with that. And just as it looks like a weird sea creature, which is also, you know, a positive way of, of looking at it. I think it's a... <laughs> oh, I'm making a mess of this. That's fine. It's the, we're, you know, past caring at this point. <laughs> But also, you know, it has the it has the shape it's supposed to have. And... It does. I think I did, aside from the marzipan, I did mm -hmm. everything correctly. I'm also really interested in. I mean, if it tastes good, then you've you've effectively made marzipan that people with almond allergies can eat, which is you know, yeah, seems like a pretty good thing. So, uh, it's here we go. Piping is happening. You could sort I of think, artfully... this is actually the first time I've ever piped, so it's. Huh. Not... Oh, this isn't even centered on the plate. This is. Don't worry about it. No one cares. <laughs> it's just so that bad. is that is not a failure. And you can pipe artfully over the over the tears and make them look like little little floral, little little efflorescences. Yeah, exactly. Um, I was kind of thinking about it. As as Rebecca said, the undercake looked amazing. Like all the different ingredients. Yeah. Looked like they worked. It's so funny. I know in theory exactly how to pipe, mm -hmm. but in practice, it's tricky. It's it's a real like learned skill. I think. I think you should cut your yeah. first slice out of the bit that's torn up there, and then once again, yeah, everything else will look fine. And then you can take a photo of it from the other side for, for the internets. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So that's just all just piped. As, just as praising its structural integrity. I think it's also true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna cut a slice out of it because. That we're getting to that point. We are getting to that point. <laughs> we passed that point, actually. but <laughs> We passed that point, actually, about 33 minutes ago. But what else are, we, what, what else are either of towel? us doing? <laughs> I keep losing things. <laughs> uh, you know, your cavernous kitchen. Where... <laughs> yeah, so much room for stuff to get so lost. So much room for stuff to get lost in, yes. A little. Thank you, by the way, to those of you who have stuck around to see the cake. Yeah, it's, this is we appreciate your your loyalty. <laughs> okay, I'll take All the right. cleanest part. Yes. Well, there's some competition for that honor. <laughs> um, I think you should take the. I'm trying to point at it. The one with the, the where the line is. Yeah. Oh, like right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's cutting really well. That's important. That's good. This is already so much better than the baked Alaska. Also, the first piece is always a bitch to take out. Here we go. Ha. Oh, well, it certainly is in this case. <laughs> when it chills, it really, it'll be... You yeah, it really it. should have chilled for longer. Yeah, yeah. No, it's fair. So that is not a neat slice. No. <laughs> How is it? How is it? Okay. We gotta, we gotta like. Oh, yeah, time to zoom in on my rapturous expression or whatever. <laughs> hmm. The marzipan's a little weird. I think it's chewier than it's supposed to be. That's, is, um, it, but is it is it good? Yeah. Yay! Does it taste like pistachios at all? A little bit. Yeah. I mean, it probably would taste more like pistachios if it was pistachios and not semolina. <laughs> but well, it's got a pretty strong flavor, so. Good, good. Is hmm. it too sweet? Has a sweetness. It was good. I was worried that it would be too sweet because mm -hmm. there's so much sugar in this. Yeah, you were saying. Um, but with the the whipped cream, which is not sweetened, and the jam, which is a little bit tart, mm. um, it's really well balanced, actually. Good. So, yeah, it tastes really good. I'm glad that I made Here it, even go. if it looks kind of nightmarish. Well, it's your first one, and now you know. <laughs> now I know. I am going to put it back in the fridge. Yeah, and maybe for sure. Once 
once we're off camera, maybe I'll try to do the the rose and the chocolate. Mm-hmm. Even though that mm-hmm. it's a little bit, yeah. you know, locking the barn after the horse has been stolen and everything. But but honestly, like it's basically it's let's get it's basically dome shaped. So mm-hmm. I think if you piped, if you like artfully piped things around the Im- <laughs> over the imperfections, it would look quite nice. <laughs> if I, I that could work. no, I think if I only photograph it from the one side, yeah, that too. Uh huh. Just lie to the internet about it. There we go. That's everything on the internet is a lie. You know that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. All uh. right. Shall we shall we end well, this broadcast? The marathon. marathon, the longest broadcast yeah. ever. <laughs> All right. Amazing. Um, well, I'm so glad that it, it worked and it's tasty. It honestly it looks it looks pretty tasty and it sounds pretty tasty. So that's the key thing, the aesthetics you can work on. <laughs> I would have taken a smaller slice <laughs> if I'd been thinking ahead, because this is it is a lot of sugar, even though it doesn't come across as very sweet. Mm-hmm. Thank lot. you, Rebecca. So yeah, th- 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 thank you everyone who actually stuck around to watch the whole thing and even <laughs> in absentia, those people who weren't there. Yes, just as we made it. <laughs> um, yes, and tune in again when <laughs> Jared makes something savory next time. Uh, I've been, I had a hard time finding guests. That's why we weren't around for February. We uh, February was just a month when nobody wanted to, <laughs> nobody was in the mood. Everybody was time. depressed. Everybody was depressed. It was February. Nobody <laughs> wanted to hang around and talk about food. I understand I completely. <laughs> I, I've got some, I've got some interesting guests who are, are who we've, we've been talking to about coming on the, on the stream. So I think there's going to be more more kitchen parties in the future so we hope yeah. you will join us again and i am finally going to end this broadcast <laughs> so we